here we go. Let's let's kick off ideology for 2022. Now, I will say I just want to do a shout out, of course, to the team uh, at Advantis, who uh, is really the, the manufacturing brand behind ideology. And there's so many people that, that do so much work to kind of make it all happen. And I'm going to talk about that probably many times during uh, the live. But a shout out to uh, Chris, who does all the graphics for ideology. And we'll, I'll talk about that when we get into more of the detail. And Tracy, who is uh, the product manager, who goes and sources all of the crazy ideas. And Raina, who does all of the marketing support. And Laura, who does all of the sales. And Daisha, who, who supports us kind of behind the scenes. There's just there's a whole team at at Advantis that really support ideology. So shout out to all of them and thank you. Thank you for this. I'm really excited. Uh, the collection, of course, uh, I talk about ideology. It's just a fun brand because it allows us to explore so many different creative possibilities. And of course, I couldn't do this collection without the help of Paula. So a shout out to P. Uh, we work very hard, really year round on ideology from uh, trying to find vintage elements to figuring out what we want to do uh, to create what we want to add to the line But I will also say that when we do that This is one of those lines that has a life cycle meaning uh, Every year when we launch new stuff in ideology There is a significant amount of ideology that goes away and goes away forever and I'm not going to focus on that I'm not going to post a list about that because well quite honestly if you don't have it you didn't want it So <laughs> there it is uh, but uh, that's kind of the thing about it, but there's always excitement when it comes to adding new stuff. So I'm going to take you through the product, talk about it uh, quickly, and then we'll get into the makes as well. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Anya. Henry. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, I know. See, Tracy said, wouldn't it be cool if, if you saw that in the chat, like I say that a lot. And once those words come out, you better run. You better run. That's what it is, because I do. I like that. I love sure that. You do. I do. I okay. So as you can see here, we're starting with paper. Now over here, this part isn't new, but there is some, some newness to the paper line. And so I talked about this during the Valentine Live when we did it and introduced probably a lot of people uh, for the first time to the craft stock. Now, the craft stock for ideology, we actually changed the way we do craft stock. It used to be sold in that square uh, gummed paper pad. And I think it was the last year, we started to roll out in this new configuration, right? This new size. These are six by nine sheets. All right, uh, 24 sheets in a pack, three each of eight colors. And we actually increased the weight of this as well. It used to be an 80 pound cardstock. Now it's a hundred pound craft stock. And the cool thing about this is that it is a craft paper, right? Printed in color. And this is one of those that I shared uh, during Valentine, how easy it is to distress this because you can just take sandpaper or a sanding grip, go over that printed finish to wear off some of that printed color Go in with your favorite distress ink, doesn't have to be brown. Splash a little water and like, wow, look how cool that paper changes because the color comes from the actual craft stock, but it's still craft paper with a printed color finish. Uh, these colors were definitely inspired by the distress palette, that's for sure. So these are the three that we had in the line. I talked about that. We had warm, cool, and neutral. And many of you, as I mentioned, were introduced to this, but we've expanded that uh, to a pack of black. Now we launched this for Halloween last year. This was an inspiration from uh, my friend Zoe Hillman. This was several years ago where she's like, you need just a pack of black craft stock. I'm like, really? I don't, I don't think people would care if we had just a pack of black. And well, it's pretty much been in the line ever since. So thanks again uh, for that, Zoe. So this, we brought the black craft stock out for Halloween. And again, it sold incredibly well. So we decided to keep it part of the everyday line because yes, black is really important for uh, different backgrounds or if you're doing any oxide it's great for oxide as well so there's an entire pack of just the black craft stock and then as many of you asked metallics you, you guys said last time like are you going to do metallics in in this thicker paper uh, in this new size because if you've used it it completely changes and there are some makes in here i know that uh, vicky did a great make using the new metallic and she said to me, my gosh, this, this handle's totally different. Like you can sand it uh, way deeper. You can create all different variations of that metallic finish because of the surface. So uh, I'm really happy that we were able to, to also bring this in that thicker substrate. So here are the two metallics. There's one that are just the metallic colors, right? So these are all the different colors that you get in this, everything, and you can see just how beautifully reflective it is. The cool thing about this, it is not a foiled paper. Okay, it is still printed in ink, so it's going to allow you to sand it off 
and scuff and, and scrape down to different layers and it still has that craft core to it. So all of these, you get that nice spectrum of colors. And then we have just the metallic classics. If you're into the industrial or just the prettiness of metallics, you know, this has the, the gold and silver and bronze and copper and onyx. So there's a black metallic in there and champagne. So all the colors that we had in the individual pads, it's the same colors in, in these, just again, that new size and that thicker paper. So just happy to, to see craft stock kind of uh, make, make the move and the, the entire collection uh, made it over. And you can see that, you know, the process obviously of metallics is quite different how they print versus the ink. Because it is flooded with ink, that paper does have a bow to it as soon as you get it. But when you glue it down and sand it and, and stick it down on your projects, it flattens out just fine. Also great for die cutting. So that's enough of the paper, I talked about that. But there is a lot of paper in ideology this time, a lot of paper elements to it. So I'm just gonna kind of buzz through them and I'll talk more in detail as we get into the makes. I don't wanna spend too much time on the, the packaging part of it. But uh, the, the cool thing about adding paper to ideology now for me is that we don't follow a theme. I know back in the day we used to develop uh, 12 by 12 paper pads, you know, French industrial and, and retro and dapper and, and destination and all of that. And it just really wasn't the fit for ideology because for ideology, it's really about doing different things, creating mini books, using it in journals or on vignettes or cards or anything you wanted. And I didn't want to be stuck down to a theme or a specific size of paper because I know many people are like, oh, this 12 by 12 is beautiful. I don't want to cut it down. And, and I know there's a debate, people that, that want 12 by 12, but there's enough of that out there that you can still use that and, and use it with ideology. So we introduced backdrops. Uh, these are six by 10 papers. They are double-sided. They are uh, inspired by ephemera, a, a lot of ledgers, book covers. We do so many different things. There's a lot of great scale. And this is volume three. We actually have volume one and two that still remain in the line. The great thing, look at all this cool art that you get with backdrops, right? Really fun, there's all different scale of patterns, right? Paula makes sure that it's really important. She's like, we need small scale. And I'm like, yeah, well, we need big scale. So it is fun. Uh, when we work with Chris on this, we give him all these things and it's like a tug of war. She's like, I want little flowers. I'm like, I want a giant ticket, right? But the, the best part is if you use it on things, you get that variation of scale, right? And as a maker, that's what I always felt you were limited to when you had a, a pad of 12 by 12 paper. The scale was very cohesive because the intent was to use it all together. The intent of backdrop is just to use whatever you want, whenever you want to use it. And you can combine these with any other papers that you have. Now, one thing that we did uh, definitely different this time, so I'm just gonna open this up just to show you, and you'll see it from the makes but this was something we're really excited about, volume three that we put in there. Um, in addition to, of course, the ledgers and the great colors, we even did marble paper, things that you can cut apart, again, for junk journals, right? <laughs> I agree, Tifa, she's like, just get two because you are need it. But this time we decided to incorporate large photo papers, right? So the full paper is some type of group shot and there's several different types of group photos in here. But these are great if you're going to do, again, an art journal page or you wanted to do, well, you'll see some of the, uh, the great makes, the panels or books with this. You know, things out of, look at this, out of a, a French catalog with that linen. It just, it almost looks like it would be textural, but it isn't. So everything is double-sided. There you go, a little scale of that. I love this typewriter thing. We threw in different pops of color as well, right? Little bits of pink. There's some cool maps. There's florals. There's all sorts of elements, boxes. Right, so like scanned in a cigar box. So if you, if you are doing uh, any type of home deck project, these are really great for that. Or just an envelope, right? I mean, look at that great envelope background. So cool to have a giant envelope to put, say in the back of a tray, right? Take a look at that one. Look at that class photo. So good, absolutely charming. So anyway, I could go on and on about these papers, but I do love uh, the backdrops, and I'm glad you guys do too. I was happy that we were able to add volume three so quick, right? So it's not something, a plan where we plan on doing uh, a volume every year. It's just if, if people are using them, and that's the most important thing of a maker, if people are using them, then that supports us to uh, continue to create more. So I do love the backdrops. Speaking of Pocket cards. This was something we launched Christmas. You guys supported this idea so well that we were able to bring this into the everyday line. So pocket cards, they are just double-sided cards. There are three different sizes. 
there are collage elements that are layered with kind of vintage tape. We've been doing that since Memoranda when we did that paper pad years ago. But I love the vintage tape layers. Uh, this has a lot of botanical in here, so it has a, a much softer side to this, but a couple nods to uh, industrial, not too much, but a few, like you'll see the numbers in there or some cigar boxes. These are size, you can see the sizes here, right? You have three by two cards, three by four, and three by six. There are page pockets out in the scrapbook world. I know Allie Edwards champions that, that particular size uh, quite a bit and those sizes so you could find page pockets if you were doing uh, mini uh, scrapbooks or journals or just use them you're going to see Sharon has made some great cards out of them but I love that there are 55 pieces that are just it's a great paper element they're not all collaged you'll notice uh, the front is collaged and the back of that is just going to be that background pattern uh, repeated so if you didn't if you want to do your own collage with say paper dolls or ephemera you can do that but just a, a cool product that some, sometimes you look at this and you're like, what, what would I do with these? It's just a great uh, paper that you already have these individual sizes with those rounded corners. Love that. Then as we get into papers, there's some things, and again, I thank you guys every time this happens, that make the cut from seasonal. And I say this every time when we launch stuff. There are times that we design something specifically for seasonal and it just takes off. And that allows me to go to Advantis and say, oh wow, this does so good. I think we should keep it as part of the everyday line. And these two SKUs in particular, these are ephemera snippets that we launched. Uh, this one was Halloween, right? We did this curator, which all these cool little uh, labels, right? 233 little colorful labels. Look at that. Chris had so much fun clipping this uh, because these were, <clears throat> these are original labels that he had to cut and lay down on the template. But look at all the great colors you get. Perfect for cork vials, uh, for all sorts of uh, smaller elements because they have handwriting and numbers and very, very charming. And then of course, just labels. Now these are not adhesive backed. So this does allow you to use your tiny attacher, stamp on them, ink them or collage them on. So there's a whole variety of different shapes and sizes and has that charming red edge, blue edge or black edge. So these are really nice. Even if you're gonna do some, some type of journaling or just date stamping on there, you can. Uh, 120 of those labels. So again, these were Halloween and Christmas, but now they're part of the everyday line in ideology. So thank you for that. It makes a big difference. It, it really, really does. Uh, that when you guys not only support it, but that you use it, then it just, it gives me the leverage. It gives me, and then it gives me the leverage to kind of expand. So now we're gonna get into the new stuff. One of my favorites. And I think one of the maker's favorites, cause you'll see in all the makes. This is another snippets. So these are number strips and I found this art, this was a, an amazing uh, ephemera seller that I found and she did these collage sheets. I'm like, I just want all the little numbers from all of your collages. And so she licensed all these numbers to me. Look at all these great strips. So everything is just a great strip. It's easy to, again, use a tiny attacher, right? On one of the edges. So you can have that little receipt, you can cut a little ribbon flag, you can do uh, any type of layering. But if you love numbers and typography, well, like most junk makers do, Look at that cool assortment. I love this one. This is an instant fave. I think just because there's such a variety of, again, typography or elements to it, you never really know what you're going to find in there. Really great over photos, right? It's all about those little ephemera. And the things that we often don't look at, you know, like we might look at a ledger receipt and we're looking at all the great part of the ledger, but then it's that little number and that's what catches my eye and Paula's too. We are number junkies. We want to do numbers all the time. Just ask Tracy, we're like numbers. <laughs> Stacy said the same thing. Yes, right? Right, Marlise is the same thing. Like it, it's very, very cool. Another product that in, was inspired by uh, Christmas were collage tiles. So collage tiles we launched uh, last year, they're inch and a half by inch and a half squares that are designed to work on the vignette panel, which, spoiler, also made it into the everyday line. But I decided to do collage tiles a little different to add them to the everyday line, just to give you guys more of a variety. So you'll see in here that uh, there's still that inch and a half square, but you're gonna get some collages, which I did. So these I've already layered with ephemera, did crayon, and you'll see makes using these. So you'll get much more of an up close look. Uh, but also I included some photos in here. So it does allow you to make a, a great collage with just photos, kind of photo booth size, but again, cut to square. And then just kind of some zooms of the backdrops, right? So you'll see some of these papers are actually the same papers in the backdrop. So if you were doing something that you wanted to have some sort of uh, a little bit of a fluid nature to your make, 
you can use these collage tiles with the backdrops because they support the color palette uh, the same. So really happy to have these. And you do get two each of each of the tiles, uh, 72 pieces. And I'll share like why I like that there's two. Uh, most makers just like it. So it, it helps uh, alleviate the separation anxiety of using something, <laughs> right? Because there's 36 different tiles. But I love, uh, there's a specific aspect of why I like to have two of those. Then this one. Now, I'm not going to tell you which ephemera SKUs have retired, but there are some ephemera SKUs in the line that have been in ideology for many years that are going away uh, this year. And whenever I talk about things going away, just to be perfectly clear, just because something is going away, that going away means it's starting now. So that means that there's going to be inventory probably for a good year or more uh, from either Advantis or in retailers. So when I say stuff is going away, it doesn't mean that like as of today, you can't get it anymore and you have to run and, and buy it all up. It's just kind of letting you know that things will, will be going away and replaced with newer things. So don't freak your freak in, in worrying about what's going. Um, celebrate what's coming. And that would be uh, new ephemera. What we really wanted was something that would be vibrant and colorful. So you'll see we added a lot more color because the earlier days of ephemera, we were going for much more of a vintage, faded, shabby look when we were doing that. We would go down, and now Chris really worked to uh, salvage the, the colors of this, really amp up the colors of tags or book covers. There's a whole cool assortment. Paula found some great stuff, everything from uh, postcards and backdrops to labels and tickets. We also wanted to make sure that we included some of the elements from other paper skews. So you're gonna see a few number strips in here. Now, these aren't number strips that are in the other one, right? We wanted to add a little bit bigger scale, but just to kind of give you a taste of like, that was a collage tile, but we shrunk it down to its original size. So just, we had a, a good play with this. Another thing that you'll see right up here up front, we brought back book covers. We launched some book covers in the Halloween ephemera last year. You saw some great little libraries and people making mini books and I heard you and people were like, I, I hope this isn't just seasonal. I hope you do book covers. Well, we did a lot of book covers. We also, again, cleaned up the color, made them a little bit more vibrant. So like the marble book covers, uh, the composition books, you can see them. They're not as brown and grungy as they were for Halloween, but really nice. Also some strip elements. You know, it's really important when we do ephemera that we pay attention to shape. So we want to give everything from, you know, like round elements, like the globe or the seal, the pointy finger, there's this little cool uh, call collect arrow uh, that Vicky made loud and clear. She's like, I need a whole pack of those. There's only two in there. Um, but also there's a feather, a nest, just some interesting things. There's that little pointy finger, some florals, things that, again, you can layer and uh, work with different shapes on there. So just a, a fun collection. I love this. It's probably one of my favorite ephemeras that we've done. Another thing that we felt was time is going to be flashcards. Now, if you followed ideology for years, you have seen flashcards come and go in the line. They used to come in this tiny little box, a little card box. They were uh, really cute flashcards. They were a coated paper. I will say a little on the thin side, right? It wasn't even as, as thick as a playing card. And they were cute and we used them. Uh, that was probably the really early days of ideology. And then they went away, right? People just weren't using words as much, but then junk journals, right? The whole junk journal movement that's going on right now and people doing uh, collages or even art journal pages specifically around a word, the power of a word, the power of storytelling. So we felt that it was time to reimagine flashcards, meaning bring back some small sizes, but also do some bigger ones. Because again, we have a mixed media makers that are working on a canvas or you're working on, uh, like Tipa would work on an envelope. Just, we wanted to give a variety. So in this pack, you'll see they are all double-sided. They have great authentic vintage grunging to them. And when I say grunging, you can see the, the foxing of the paper, right? So we didn't do, just do them out of the, the regular manila paper like we did originally. They all have that, that great vintage charm, but also the thickness. Now the thickness of these, these are the same thickness as the ideology layers, if you're familiar with that. It is that you know kind of playing card thickness, if you will right? has a, a great little number on there. So just a, a fun word. And it is nice that they're not all repeated, right? So some words are only on the mini ones. Some are repeated just depending on what it is. But I just think they're going to be great for use all year, whether it's just going to be, again, card making, journals. I love that. Humble, curious, lucky. Just You can just see you can create an entire 
uh, project just based off of a word. So I'm excited to, to bring these back. And that's important about ideology as well. The, the best part of working with the team uh, at Advantis is they do give me that creative permission to be like, look, you do you. You know, if, that, if that's what you want to bring back, it doesn't matter that we did it and it's been there, done that. The reimagining of it, sometimes things just have a, you know, kind of a way of, of making their way back into things. But as long as they're reimagined, I think that that's going to be totally worth it. I already see people. I love the whole two pack concept because I, I agree with you, especially as a maker, when you see stuff, you're like, I'm going to need two of those. Uh, so these are our gauge frames. These are part of the everyday line. We launched these a couple years ago, but one of the things, maybe it was even a year ago, time is not good for me, but this is a, a very cool frame. I love that these are flat metal frames with the great hardware. Many people use them for different things. We've introduced uh, ephemera and layers throughout the years, even uh, during Halloween of pieces specifically scaled for this. And I heard from the makers, several people that love steampunk or industrial like I do, that said, hey, we need enough stuff to, to work in these, but also the, the shape, the circular shape in things is really key. So we're introducing gauge dials. Now these, again, are printed on layer thickness. So it's that, it's that coated cardstock that is, well, just like the flashcards, right? But these are single-sided. There's a whole assortment of cool vintage, there we go, gauges, compass, dials, very cool, not only for the gauge frames, but you'll see they also fit the Ideology pocket watch, right? But you can also use them in your different collage and elements. So if you like to add circles, you like to add that little bit of industrial, this might not be for everyone, but it's certainly for me. I love them because I do like just the, the numbers and that arrow. You can use a clock spinner, you can use a game spinner, you can utilize these in so many different ways, but just having uh, a pack, they're all the exact same size circle. So they do fit under here perfect. And you'll see from the makes just how, how well they tie in. And they have just such an authenticity. Uh, the person I licensed this art from, man, amazing photographer that actually photographed real ones because that's what I wanted. I wanted the authentic art. I didn't want it just to create these digitally, which always poses a challenge for Chris. Right, and I say, hey, Chris, Chris, wouldn't it be cool if we can just take those and you make something great out of it? He's like, it's a photograph. I'm like, yes, it would be. <laughs> Which is this one? Another SKU that made the cut, and I've had a lot of messages. Sorry that I didn't answer them, only because I didn't want to spoil the surprise, but people said, these window frames from Halloween better come back because we launched these baseboard window frames at Halloween. They were gone. They didn't come back at Christmas right? Which people were upset about. That's like, why didn't you bring these back for Christmas? Because we had no idea they would be this popular. Um, so because of that, we decided to add them to the everyday line. So the great thing about these, they are baseboard, which means they are die cut out of a thick book board, uh, coded imagery, again, all from photographs, different window frames. You can see a lot of inspiration out there. If you just look up uh, baseboard windows, you're going to see makes from Halloween to Christmas to everything. Um, but all the great window openings, little portholes, little arch windows. These could be layered with transparencies, with mica. Well, you'll see from the makers um, how they did it. So yes, this is part of the everyday line of ideology now. And again, thanks to you guys, because it's cool. And maybe this is the first time you're seeing it, right? Because you didn't see them uh, during the season. Because, well, pretty much after the live, they were gone, right? That was it. Another paper skew that was inspired by a seasonal launch were, were mini file folders. We had a lot of people that we launched these only for Christmas last year. And people said, these are great. You know, they're, it's a coated surface, again, just like layers. But what we decided to do, instead of going all themey on everything, wanted to make something that was just more relevant to the maker. So it kind of went old school, right? With that vintage ledger, line paper, graph paper, something that I think whether you were a, a clean maker, right? Meaning you liked more bright, colorful things, or whether you were a grungy maker, because this is coated, right? This is like that layers material, right? They're double-sided. So uh, if you like this one on the outside, well, you just flip it around and, and now you have that. We also made sure, and I say we, but it, it's really uh, Paula working with Chris that, you know, when you're looking at that folder, you have two different papers because it just makes it more eclectic. So that was something that was an important detail, which is like, well, if it's open, you have that. So if you're gonna make a, a card out of this, or again, you're gonna put it into uh, a signature as a, a junk journal, or you're just going to use it uh, on a scrapbook page to put inclusions or journaling in there. But when you flip it over, you're still gonna get the, the opposite of those two different textures. Now there's three, the, from the, the file folders themselves, 
There's three different cuts, I guess, if you will, right? Meaning if you want the tab on that side or that side, that's just about flipping it over. And then you have that, that middle tab. So if you are going to put it into uh, a book or a journal, you can still take advantage of those three tabs. And whether you do the smaller folders or the larger ones, right? Still mini, but you can do a book and still have a smaller folder on the inside. So just excited to have these. I think it's really cool to have uh, a surface that is inkable, sandable. You can do stamps, you can do rub-ons. Uh, because of that coated paper, it does allow a lot more uh, creative play on there, especially if you do things like textures on there, because it's not going to warp as easily as an uncoated paper would. Paper is important. Then we have another favorite, label stickers. We've played around with these. We've, we have some everyday ones. We, have, uh, we did these for seasonal. So these are a plastic sticker, right? So just like an old school label maker where that word is actually raised up, right? Debossed into that and you have that little white printing. But these just decided to go more of a thought thing. So we have ones that are you know, specific to different events. But I think again, for cards or journals, just sometimes you want a thought and a stamp is great. Don't get me wrong. Love stamps, right? Love rub-ons, love word bands and all sorts of things with words. But just having this style, it's very bold and it really stands out on a collage very, very well. So you get two sheets of the same assortment, right? But I like that, you know, see the good in my heart, do your best. Some of them are just a little different, right? Do what you love, genuine, right? Sometimes it's just a word. I love turn the page, right? That's just really great about maybe somebody that kind of needs to, to move on on things or, or get through things. I just, I, there's a lot of great, very thoughtful <laughs> sentiments on these label stickers. So happy to add those. Then we have this one. So I want to talk specifically about it because usually in the world of ideology, when I design rub-ons, um, I do two of the same sheet. That's what we have done for years. This time, as I was designing this, I just got a little carried away. I'm going to be honest in, in creating little elements again, for people that love to do uh, junk journals or cards or just collage. And you love little bits of randomness, right? Um, that's what this is. Take a look at this set of rubs. There are two different sheets of pure randomness. So not only do you get these big, uh, large, bold numbers, right, on the bottom, but each page has something totally different and completely eclectic. Everything from tiny little numbers, serial numbers, large numbers, pointy finger, light bulb, cool library stamp, identification. I mean, these are going to be great for all sorts of, of different types of makes. Remnant rubs, they work incredibly well. Right? They'll work on any of the substrates from glass to metal to paper to wood. Let me just remind you about rubs and ink. If you are an inker, if you like to use Distress Ink or Oxide or any kind of inks on a substrate, if you are going to apply rubs over an inked background, you need to heat set your ink first. Even if you just did ink blending with Distress Ink, right? Because the resin of that ink will not allow these to transfer. So I have a lot of people, they'll do a, you know, a great blending and they'll try to put a rub on there. Like, oh, these are garbage. They don't work. They work very well. But if that ink is not dry heat set because of that resin, they won't transfer. A lot of times, if you go and look up remnant rub resist, I love to put the rub ons first because they create an amazing resist. But I mean, look at all the detail from tiny little things, uh, really pack these in. Uh, again, a shout out to Chris because he has to, he has to factory format these because you know, I remember old school days when I would buy rub-ons and you get like four things on a sheet and then it was it. I'm like, I have a pair of scissors, man. I can navigate this sheet really good. So each one of these elements, it does have its own individual halo. It's not one big rub-on, guys. They, they are different depending on the idea, but you can just go in with your scissor and just cut out what you want and rub that onto a substrate, but a lot of fun. Yeah, I love that perfection one. Came from a cigar label right? Just little random bits. Probably one of my most favorite rub-on sets I've ever done. Because to me, I can just use them for so many different things. Even like on the edge of a, you know, a file folder, put a little number, a little word, just cool. Love this set. So this is called eccentric, right? Because that's kind of my thought process. Okay. Next, we're going to get into the world of paper dolls. And let me just explain something about paper dolls. When we do paper dolls, they evolve throughout the years, right? We update the cast as often as we can. We try to be as inclusive as possible with getting so many different types of vintage photos, photos that, that I purchase, that we own. And I know many people try to say, oh, you know, well, 
Uh, I can send you a picture of, of my, my great great grandfather or this, but we have to actually own the photo. So we really scour to look for a lot of different types of photos. And throughout the years, uh, paper dolls have evolved, right? They, they've gone from uh, just doing individual people to groups of people to large and small. And when we revamped them last year and just separated them into groups and solos, we just stuck with one size or one scale of people, right? Instead of all the different sizes. And then, of course, the whole fodder movement. <laughs> the fodder movement, and I know fodder has been around for a long time, but, but junk journalers and people that are making all these little elements to use in their collage. And we heard, people were like, we need mini paper dolls. We need things to come back. I'm like, I'm not going there. I'm not going back to that and, and redoing that. But because there was enough people asking about minis, I was like, well, hey, Advantis, what if we just did all of the paper dolls that we've done in both solos and groups, and we shrunk them down and did one skew of minis, right? Because they were like, well, we're not, we can't just keep going skew intensive with all these paper dolls. But what if we did that on just one, one skew of all of that? Well, that's what these guys are, mini paper dolls. There are 133 paper dolls in this pack, okay? This collectively, all the solos, all the groups from the packs that we launched last year shrunk down. So they are going to be scaled perfect for, I mean, you can see according to my thumb, uh, smaller elements. So uh, if you're going to do again, collage, you wanna pair them with a sticker, you wanna put them on smaller tags, you wanna do them uh, as little pullouts for a book or again, better fit on a greeting card. We had a lot of card makers that like to use paper dolls on cards and they're like, well, it's fun, but man, like it's big. It's like, yes, because really paper dolls were scaled for ideology stuff, for vignette trays and vignette boxes and, and clocks and, and domes. So the fact that we're able to shrink these down, I really hope that this, these do really well. Atrice said she can see them in, in pockets. Uh, I agree. I, I really hope that it, it is, and again, a shout out to Advantis for kind of letting me go back, but we didn't touch those other SKUs. So if this, if, if minis don't, don't work out, then just minis can go away and they, they don't impact the regular paper dolls. It is a, I mean, not, not that you guys are going to be concerned with the cost to produce something, but this is a very costly product to produce because if you can imagine the die lines uh, that they have to do to die cut all of these when they're printed, uh, paper dolls, again, are printed on that coated layered material. So they have to be die cut because we want uh, as, as much detail around these as possible. And Chris literally spends weeks, if not months, touching, retouching, uh, doing die lines, creating bleeds. So because uh, many of these are extracted out of photos, they're extracted out of photos that have scenery and we just want that paper doll. So uh, thanks, Chris. I hope you can see from from the comments that people do love paper dolls. And, and you guys are really, you're using photos in your makes way more. I mean, we, we talk about and we joke about photos and ideology all the time that it started out as found relatives. Then we've done photo booth. <laughs> yeah, Chris, months. Well, it's a long time because we, and the, the thing is, is Chris will have them all laid out and then Paula and I will find that one photo. And we're like, Chris, can we just add one more photo? And he's got to reshuffle the entire, for one photo. A good guy, He's Chris. Got the of his name. He really does. But it's because the photos just they have such great charm. So I hope you guys like this, the mini scale there. Yeah, they're quite they're quite charming. So um, and you'll see from the, the scale of it. So speaking of scale, we just decided to go crazy. Once we did that, Paul and I are like, okay, so if we went really small, what if we just went big? What if we just said, okay, we have paper dolls, standard size, we have minis. What if we just went big? Because if people are doing journals or collage or canvas, what if we focused on something massive? So these are the new paper doll portraits. And what they are, they are some of our favorites from current and past uh, paper dolls that are just from the bust up on a much larger scale, a massive scale that you can use for all sorts of things. So this really does capture being uh, the, the hero of your story, right? You can see that you can add all sorts of different elements. Some people can, you can now scale it with ephemera, you can do your tinting, you can now add charms and details that you couldn't do before simply because uh, of the size or the scale of it, right? 
Now you have the ability to go in if you wanted to do rub-ons or stamps. This really became kind of that focal point. And I think it was time now because there are so many people using photos in so many different ways in their work. So giving you the ability of, of having different options from that paper doll, from something small or something really large, this to me was the time to do it. And that's why we, we took a shot because I thought, well, we don't know what we don't know. And I think giving people uh, the options of what types of photos they want to work with and how they want to work with them, I think is going to be key. So this is the pack of portraits. They're a lot of fun and wait till you see what the makers did with them. Because if you're looking at them, you're like, what would I possibly do with something this massive? People are really loving the big. They're, they're just cool. They're very cool. Which brings me to my next one. This one, I am so excited about. You can ask Paul, like, I can't stop buying these now. Like, I've still bought more and we haven't even, I don't even know if the SKU is going to work to even ever do it again. But if we do, I'm already ready. These are called snapshots. So let me just talk about a little backstory of snapshots. So when we look for photos, especially for paper dolls or portraits, whatever, if they're paper dolls, we look for a lot of things. We look at detail, we looked at its full body, it needs to have feet, it needs to have all that because if it's a paper doll, we want them to be able to either stand or sit on something. And often when we're shopping for photos, we love the paper doll, but we also love the story behind it. And sadly, when we do paper dolls, that part gets cut away, right? Because that's all we're doing, we're focusing on that. And we've had a lot of photos that we purchased that just really didn't make it into paper dolls. And that's, that was the inspiration behind Snapshots, where I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if we just took a lot of those photos? Some of these have been in ephemera that were really small, and we did an entire series of just, just snapshots, right? Paula really wanted to have some buildings. She's like, I want houses, I want trees, I wanna start building scenes with these photos. And the idea just came to life. And once, once her and I were on it, it was over. She was like, I've got all these photos from albums. And she sent me some amazing ones. But just to kind of give you, I won't go through all of them, but just to give you a, a taste of them, there, it's a whole variety of, look, look at that. Look at the little adventurous, adventurous spirit. That's actually Paula's family. I love that with the car, right? Great guys on bicycles right? Schoolhouse. So there's going to be a, a house in the back for paper dolls. This one, uh, again, you can see like you can go in and cut these out, right? You can silhouette those and still use them like with the mini paper doll to create a scene, do that whole force perspective, right? Disney style, right? There's a little detail. Now, one thing I want to, to point out, if you notice on these photos, that really wide edge, we designed all of these with that wide edge, because if you have the tonic decal trimmer, you can use that and you can cut the edges with your decal trimmer to get that vintage deckled edge of the old school photos. So uh, we left it big that if you wanted to go in and do rub-ons or stamping or coloring, you could, but also if you had that deckle trimmer, we wanted to give you a little meat to, to cut off from there. I mean, look at that. That's such a great photo, that cool pilot, right? Great cabin, friends, travel, train. Look at this one. I freaking love this photo, right? Look at these guys on those motorcycles. I mean, how cool is that? Ugh, really, really good. They're just a lot of fun. So everything from uh, group photos to class photos to travel photos. Yeah, that's a great one. That's like Debbie Shue and her team, right? Just touring the world. There you go. It is. <laughs> that reminds me of that. But yeah, just hope this is one of my favorites. This is in uh, backdrops as well as a full page. This is Paula's photo. I just love them. But see, that's the thing about snapshots, right? I mean, how charming is that? Like such a great historic piece. And to be able to, to have those and capture those and use these in art, that's the best part. So I do think that, that by having this, by having these snapshots, it's really going to provide a whole different level of making. Yes, still gonna work with paper dolls. Now we can work with portraits. Now we can work with minis. But the fact that we have photos that you can just tell a story because it has that whole setting and backdrop, that's, that's the best. And the ideas are random. It, it's really just about what we saw in that snapshot where it's like, okay, cool. You know, like just those guys just sitting on their car or just that garage with the gas pump. Just, I loved it. Love, love. See, I said I wasn't going to go through all of them and well, I did because, because I love them, right? This was in the flat lay for saltwater taffy. Right, remember that little photo? If you go back, that's that one from an amusement park. I just, oh, love them, love them. So anyway, I'm excited. I hope they do well because my gosh, you guys, I wanna do more. I really wanna do, I wanna do more. 
All right. Moving on to transparencies. So the transparencies are great. Uh, we started playing around with transparencies in vellum uh, for seasonal, but found that transparencies are really the best substrate over vellum. We wanted something that we could do a four color print, meaning instead of uh, just having a single color, we can actually do a full digital print on that transparency so light can go through it. Right? You can still sew through it. You can uh, do inclusions, different layers on there. We just did some fun elements, just a few pieces, right? A great little city scene that can light up. And one of my favorites that we did for uh, Halloween last year, right? This little moon guy, how great with tiny lights behind that to light up that moon sky. And then we have these large, beautiful wings. Now, uh, these actually came out of a vintage book of, of colored engravings. Look at that the detail and the coloring. And these are scaled to work with portraits. So you'll see a lot of portraits with these beautiful wings behind them. So we, de we designed wings because our current transparent wings, they're small for paper dolls. So we needed bigger things uh, to either use on its own or to use with the new portrait. So really, really beautiful. I love that moth, right? Just doing some type of little entomology study on that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, right? Just. So even if you're not into like the bug, it's not a whole thing of bugs. You can use these so many different ways, uh, whether you're lighting them up or just layering them over something else. Perfect. So that is the paper side of things. And then we're going to go on to trinkets. See, it's just even going through stuff without, oh my gosh, without even getting into the makes yet. But understanding the product, then it allows me just to call it out and not explain uh, how the product comes. That's why I want to spend time on the product. So we decided to bring back some tapes. Um, Ideology, we've had washi tape in the line for a long time, and then, well, we got rid of it. Because let's face it, there was a lot of washi tape on the market. There still is. And so we stepped out of it. We heard from a lot of makers that the washi tape out there doesn't necessarily work with the vintage aesthetic of ideology. And I struggled with that probably for about a year and a half before I wanted to just jump back into to doing some tape. And so here's what I decided to do for the tape itself. Instead of doing that big tube of all the different random sizes in there, which is what's out there. And quite honestly, if you're looking for ideology design tape, it still exists. It's still out there. I know many retailers have it, but just know if you see any of that washi tape out there, it is gone for good. These are the only two that'll remain, um, which is sad, but I totally get it. What we decided to do is relaunch uh, design tape in a whole new size and a whole different art style. So this first one, this is a wide design tape of just marbled papers. We put marbled papers in backdrops and so many people loved just that marble background, right? Just that look of that. By going wider, it's also going to allow you to adhere things again into a journal. I learned from Diane, like the importance of ripping out a page and taping it back in. Dina does the same thing. So having a wide tape that will allow you to uh, stick pages back in, or if you're gonna do a mini book or a junk journal, use it as a hinge. That's why we went extra wide because we had never done this wide of tape in the other design tapes, right? The most we went up is uh, three quarters. So we did one inch in this wonderful, cool marble pattern, right? Chris did a great job on the repeat. And well done, Chris. It looks on my boxes. I know Mario does love it. He, he always takes the design tape. He loves working with the tape, loves it. Um, and then we have this one. Now uh, I will say a shout out to both Chris and Tracy for making this happen. Uh, because usually uh, tape, most washi tapes are about a quarter inch. That's as thin as it goes. This, I wanted to go even thinner. So this is a 3 16 tape. And this is how skinny it is. But look at all these different designs you get in that one pack. Now the reason it is this width, this is the width of the edge of all of the vignette boxes. So all vignette boxes, vignette trays, that exposed bit of wood, this goes right over the top without you having to wrap it, trim it, any of that. It's also great, again, for cards, and uh, you'll see some great makes of wrapping it around glass because it's just that small scale, but I do love the detail of that. So, you know, when I was pushing Tracy, I'm like, no, it's gotta be skinny and it's gotta be cut, like right on that line, it's gotta be perfect. We need to be able to see, like just this, I would put this on every card I made right? Claims for errors must be made on receipt of goods. That's just funny to me, but I like that. I love alphabets. I love uh, just polka dots, some sort of detail elements. Again, we love numbers. This little cigar band that says strictly handmade. Can you guys see that? Light's not really cooperating. There you go. 
and that little ruler, just a cool tape. So bringing tape back for a specific reason, that to me makes sense in ideology, right? So you can either buy wide tape because you're gonna be doing, uh, you know, inserting things or you just like a wide piece of tape or you just like trims. And instead of just getting a couple rolls of that size in each assorted uh, skew, now you have just all of these uh, great skinny tapes to work with. So happy about design tape. But then we talked about linen tape. So we introduced linen tape last year of just, uh, I think it's, it's like a roll of tickets, flowers, we did ledger, and this is an adhesive back canvas tape. It's a heavyweight canvas, so it's not a, a lightweight fabric. It's pretty thick, like linen. That's why we called it linen tape. Um, but I wanted to, again, think about how are makers using textiles in their work. And I see a lot of people doing uh, patchwork or wanting to add some type of textile element by cutting up scraps of fabric and sew that in. And we have stitch scraps in the line. Those are actually pieces of felt or cotton that have a different sewing on there. But wanted to play around with linen tape. So this one is called patchwork, okay? And what it is, it is a repeat pattern. So this is gonna be your repeat, right? Meaning these are the four styles in this roll and these are the four in the second roll because you get two rolls in the pack. You can see if I can get the camera to cooperate, you can see that linen texture, right? You can even hear it. It is a heavyweight linen. By itself, beautiful. So this is actually art from uh, vintage carpet bags, right? And vintage velvet, right? Some of it's like faded and worn. Love the aesthetic of this art, but really its purpose is to cut it up. That's the whole patchwork. So if you go in and cut right there on the divided line, so that's why it doesn't really uh, fade in and out. It gives you a, a visible cut if you want. Then you can use this to actually create patches, right? Just that simple. You cut it, you can stick it down, because it's linen, you can pull off the fibers. I just use um, my scratching tool from Tonic. If you remember that, they still make it, but it's like a retractable wire brush. And I just go along the edges and that just pulls it off. Or you can just use your fingers and you can pull off those edges. But this gives you some really great fabric patches. You could still stitch through them if you wanted to, right? But I like the ability that you don't have to. If you wanted something in a journal that just had that great textile that you could have that frayed exposed edge, I like having these little options of fabric. And of course you could cut these any size you want, but that's also why we did each pattern like a different length. So if you were doing a patchwork, it makes it really easy. You'll see a cool make that Paula did uh, using these as a background, but beautiful tape. And that's, that's the important thing of a live as well, going through these details because at shelf level, you'll look at this and be like, huh, okay, no thanks, right? Because you don't really realize from this what it can do. The other benefit of linen tape it has a paper backing. So when you take it off the roll, it's not gonna stick anywhere. So it allows you to do all your cutting and all that. And then you actually peel off the back and stick it down. So think of it almost like fabric sticker tape, right? Because um, it, it can't just have the adhesive exposure. It would soak into the fabric layer below it. So all of it has, you can see that release paper, that paper backing, which also makes it very user-friendly. So Those really, really cool. Legit. They are legit. Yeah, I mean, they look yeah. real. I love, they are real. That's the best. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is fabric. That's the, that's the beauty of that. But having that, that texture, that was key to me. And I sell these details because we've gone through fabric tape twice now because, you know, we've done the first one. I said to Tracy, I'm like, I want to see it. Like, I want to, I want to hear it. I want to hear that linen. Details matter, right guys? Details matter. So those are the tapes. Then we'll get into some metals, some fun metal elements, because what would ideology be without a bunch of uh, metals and trinkety bits and all sorts of uh, fun little elements, all right? So first up are word plaques. We did word plaques for Halloween and Christmas last year uh, in this new style with this raised edge and the new typography, this new font, and I loved it. I fell in love with it. I was so glad you guys did as well. So I wanted to do an everyday set of word plaques. So. This says lost and found, use your wings full of wonder and live your story. I think they're just really wonderful. Uh, you can rub paint or crayon right in here if you wanted to add some color because the words are raised and the detail is raised. They're just, it's a great, great font, a wonderful typography font. You can also go in on these and you can easily uh, angle these and bend these. And you'll see that many makers have done this around uh, a dome uh, or a box. So I'll just show you that really quick. Kind of just grab my little pliers here. Um, 
So the cool thing about any anytime you have something that's going to be straight out of metal, right? So let's say I wanted to do, well, I'll just do lost and found. Why not? Why not just do this, do this little demo, right? Okay, so you can see that the metal has some great thickness to it, great detail. But sometimes if you wanted to put it around a curved element, some people put this even on a wine bottle as a charm. But if you do anything like you might have seen the ideology display domes where you want this to go around the dome. You can get these nylon jaw pliers. It's a jewelry plier. It has a little arc in here, right? See, a little nylon jaw. It's quite easy to do. You're just gonna take your band and I'll just show you. And you start on the edge and you just give it a squeeze and you move it and squeeze it and move it and squeeze it and move it and squeeze it, move it and squeeze it, move, squeeze, move, squeeze. See what I'm doing? And you just do a little bit at a time, right? And then once you hit this end, you're gonna go back the other way. And you can buy uh, different, I guess, arcs, radius, I have no idea the proper terminology, but you can buy different shapes of this depending on how, how intense you want your curve to be. And this will also just let you, like you can add a little bit of pressure to the end and you just keep going back and forth with this along that straight edge and create that curve, that curve that you could then put around your element. And if you want to keep going, you just keep squeezing that or you buy different sizes and you can get these to really bend. This is designed, of course, that if you're going to do something wearable, you see how it just fits the curve of a wrist. That's just a great tip when you have anything uh, that is going to be straight. Obviously, it wouldn't work for something super thick. That's about as, as thick as you want to go. But people ask a lot, like, how did, because I, I know Zoe did a, a cool Christmas a dome. How do you get that on there? It's really these guys. This is not part of the ideology line there, <laughs> jewelry, jewelry pliers. But a, a great thing to do with these if you're going to utilize these on other, other types of makes. I do love the word plaque specifically for that, that reason, right? Really fun. Okay. So as we go into some other metal elements, this is a legacy one, guys. Now, it may not mean much to you, but in, in the world of Advantis, Boy, we talked about this for a long time. So one of the very uh, first embellishment SKUs I did for Ideology years ago, they were called Word Keys. Gosh, I, I think I have them here. I gotta look in my little, yeah, I do. Okay, um, I don't have all of them, but remember these guys, right? Word Keys, these big skeleton keys that say like memory, love, uh, secret, just kind of some fun. These are big, these are big, clunky keys. You even find people on Etsy selling a single key for like $10, you know, as a, as a wedding favor. But really the, the word keys, they've been around forever. One of our top selling SKUs and still sells really well. But I just felt like it was time to, I don't know, it was time to move on, time to, to revamp this, if you will. So those word keys have been retired, meaning when they're gone in the marketplace after the next year or so, they aren't coming back and they are re being replaced with the new word keys. Something that is a little bit more simplified, right? Uh, inspired by just different shapes of house keys, a much more kind of traditional uh, standard font, right? And also that raised letter that we like seeing in, in the new uh, word bands. The fact that we have that raised text that we can now go in and add crayon and paint to. And I think that these are really going to be fitting. I think the scale, again, those other keys were pretty massive. They were for bigger projects. So this is gonna be nice for, again, mini books, junk journals, or just using as even jewelry. I see people just creating keys just to wear, but I like this new set. I think it was just time to, to create that, update the words as well. I love the word curious, lucky, little dream key, that little key to fly. And so you'll see in the makes these new keys and that's exactly what they are. We still call them word keys. They have a different uh, SKU number, but uh, I do love that. It, it, was a, it was a tough call to have things go, but there's always a time. There's always a time. Then we have this adornment SKU. So the adornment arrows, those have been retired. So the adornment arrows uh, were a pack of just arrows that were kind of large and small. Uh, but I really liked the arrow and I wanted to still keep it. So what we did is we kind of reimagined it. We extended this arrow. So these arrows in the adornment arrow and quilt is a little bit longer. It was nice because we had so many people hanging charms off of it uh, or having like a paper doll sit on it or uh, wrapping it with wire and using it in industrial things. And then I found this beautiful quill, this feather that is just absolutely charming. And I like the, the idea that you could put it on, on a vignette. You'll see some of the makes that it can even be like a, a quill kind of from, uh, 
you know, like handwriting paired with the little books is a great little story with that, with the cloche. But I like the, these adornments just from a detail aspect. So that's, that's that one. Then we brought quote seals in for every day. We did these again for the season. We did Halloween and Christmas. And this is just inspired by a wax seal, just metal. But I love the ability because we shrunk down the typography to put in just some small quotes. These make great little inclusions on things uh, for I am the dreamer, life is the dream. I love that one. Life itself is the most wonderful story. Ideas are the lost and found of the artist. So good. And the future belongs to the curious. So these are great, again, just to use for a variety of different types of makes. If you want to add color in there, take your crayon, paint anything, and you can rub that right in there to add color. So really beautiful to see that with the quote seals. Then these guys, whoop, whoop. I love these and wait till you see. I wanted to do some large adornments. You know, traditionally in ideology, we've got some small charms, uh, a variety of them. These new adornments, they are massive, big and detailed, perfect for covers of things, perfect for all of our vignette trays, vignette panels, and just the detail was amazing. And in order to capture this detail, we just needed to keep this scale. Uh, it just has a, just a beautiful sophistication to them. You can see the texture in all the metal. So these are adornment flourishes. There are three pieces, very big. They are flat backed, right? So absolutely stunning. And some people are, but where do you see like the makes with them? They're it's just, just beautiful. So this could be uh, a corner on the front of an album, right? This could just be uh, an, an artistic piece in a collage. But I love the fact that these are made uh, out of that antique silver metal flat back. So you can stick these down. You just adhere them with collage medium, but just really one of my favorites, just beautiful. The size of them, really the scale, that to me is, is what is so unique about these because you don't see just big charms out there. You'll see when we do the, the makes what they are. And then a couple other little guys that, that made their way back in the line. This first one is the lantern. We launched this at Christmas, right? Opens in the bottom that you can put tiny lights up inside and actually light up the lantern. So I was happy that this could be every day because you can use your tiny lights or just use it on its own. This was Christmas and now it's every day. And these guys, um, probably one of my favorites. Uh, I'll be honest, like I don't think anyone's as excited about these as I am because this came in the vignette hardware pack and their nails. But I think it's because people don't understand the importance of these nails. So these are not like nails you would buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or anything, right? This is a molded nail. It's a tack nail. It's like an old school nail that is squared has a very sharp point and the head of the nail is inconsistent, okay? Meaning, here's my little tin of nails. I keep them in this little vintage ointment tin, but okay. So each nail that you pick up, it's just gonna be different. So first what you're gonna see is that it is like a, oop, a little squared nail. Can you see that? So it's not rounded, it's boxy. It's got a very sharp point. So when you, when you go to put it, say in a vignette box, you can push that in and that sharp point will hold it there so you can hammer it. But then when you look at the, even from the length of the nail, they're just different. They're all totally different, but the heads are imperfect. That to me is my favorite thing. So if you look at them, they're like already hand forged. Some are big, some are small, some are offset, right? That's the beauty of these nails. So when you add them to your makes, it gives you such a great authenticity versus just using a small, picture nail or a framing nail that you would get at the hardware store. And you'll see from the makes, everything from tying string to them, hanging things, or simply attaching uh, elements to it. It's one of those that you probably would walk by a million times or think, I don't need to get a little package of nails. And they, they did used to be in the hardware where you had like screw eyes and other things that maybe you wouldn't need. And although that skew is retired, I just said to Advantis, like, there's no way, like you can't get rid of these nails because it's just one of my favorite ways to attach things especially on uh, dimensional elements like vignettes or any type of wood. So it's just a cool, it's a cool nail. All right. Yeah, you nailed it. You're a funny guy. <laughs> My table knows about those nails. Yeah. 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 Because Vicki decided she wanted to hammer something in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so next up are the new small display domes. I brought this one in, right? This is our display dome that's in ideology. It's sold individual. It is a glass dome, right? with a cork base, you can use it on a variety of different things with or without the cork, okay? But again, mini is cute. So this is the new small one. Perfect size for the new mini paper dolls if you wanna put a little paper doll in there and create a scene or a story. 
uh, just had a lot of makers that wanted to actually use these in with vignettes, right? Or use them just as a little standalone. So you get two of the small size. I think they're just, they're charming. I love just the whole uh, dome glass. And again, you don't even have to use the cork if you don't want to, but uh, I think it's perfect for kind of where we're going with the scale of things. All right, in the home stretch of stuff, a few more products and we get to get into the makes, right? So here's a product that actually <laughs> the makers uh, haven't even seen yet because it, this just came in, I think two days before this live. Um, but I wanted to add this. So these are the new Ideology resin barrels. I love these. Now I'm gonna tell you that I went back and forth with Tracy. Tracy, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't even know how many revisions we went back and forth because I knew what I wanted. Uh, when we did the cauldron for Halloween and I saw people creating things like I did bubbles coming out of it and, and candy coming out of it. I just felt that I wanted some type of structure that could hold things, right? That to me was the most important thing. And so I love the detail of the barrel. It's just fun. Uh, but you're not going to see any makes with the barrels just because, well, the makers didn't have it. But it's a very cool skew. All right. So then we'll go into some structures because without structures well we don't have many things to build off of right so we're going to go we're going to go in with that this first one is an accordion folio we've done a lot of different folios from collection folios to mini folios and i, I know a lot of people like mini books but let me talk about this one so you guys can uh, understand it and those that follow any of the demos with distress you are going to i just saw uh, 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 yeah you're welcome she's rolling her eyes i just see tammy b going they're like frontierland i know uh, yeah, I'll probably get back to that, but I want to get on to the makes. Um, the accordion folio. For those that follow any of the Distress demos, right? You know that one of the surfaces that I love, the tags made out of mixed media heavy stock, right? That's actually a substrate that I is just one of my favorites. And when I was working with Advantis, I talked to Ranger. We kind of went back and forth. I'm like, I really want that paper that I have in the Distress mixed media uh, heavy stock and tags. I want these things made out of that. So sharing the sources, it's a wonderful thing because Advantage shared the source, Ranger shared it back because I wanted these to be made out of that exact paper. And that's what this is. This accordion folio, folio is made out of mixed media heavy stock. So it's that same paper. So we know it's going to ink, spray, oxide, uh, all of those things for it. It comes with this tool tape. So you can just take that off, untie it. You can stain it. You can do whatever. But here's what this book really is, because in the package, it's just a flat thing. You don't really appreciate it. But if you looked at the photos, you would see what this is. This book is the brainchild of Paula. She sketched it out. She did the measuring. She's like, I think it would be great to do. But here's what I love about this one. The fact that the entire thing, the folio itself, is one sheet of paper, meaning we didn't have to glue any seams or anything like that. So this is the actual folio itself, okay? So this is one single piece of paper that is already has all of its creases in there, folds, but you can see that it is gusseted. Now in the packaging, to keep it flat, it is flat, right? But when you as the maker get it and make it, you simply pop these up on those three sides, and now you have a gusseted folio. And the best part of this, and you're gonna see from the makes, uh, these could be flaps that open. These could be stitched up and sealed so they become pockets. This could be a pocket going this way. This could be a pocket if you want, but it also comes with an accordion book, right? An accordion folio. And you might be like, well, who cares, Captain Obvious? I can zigzag paper fold. Yes, but again, one continuous piece of paper, right? No glued seams in there. One piece already scored, and you can see that angled cut so the great part about this is that when you do any of your inking and stamping and you'll see from the makes, now when you do all your layering, you get to get the reveal from that book. And this book, of course, could fit in here even when it's all thick, right? Thick and chunky because we have that gusseted pocket in there and then your entire folio can come together. So I just want you to see how simple it is in the package because when you see the makes, you're gonna be like, uh, what? what? Like how, how is, is uh, that's made with this? Yes, something so simple transforms into something amazing. Which brings us to the next thing. Paula did a make, um, was it last year, Paula? I think so. That inspired this idea for 
uh, these two products. It was an absolutely incredible make, right? That is a, a card box, right? Card file box, if you will. And all of these little cool artsy cards, artsy cards that uh, use paper dolls and it was last year, it was last year? Yeah. and uses the, the stencils, charms, uh, stickers, and just love this and people love this you guys love this there are so many people that that love the ability that maybe you weren't into doing a mini book or a junk journal and you just wanted the ability to create cards maybe you do artist trading cards right but you have no way to display them and paula kind of uh, hacked up a, a vignette box and she had jay build some dividers and the idea was there and so she said i would love to have that as a product i think we can do that course then I go to Tracy I'm like wouldn't it be cool if we could create uh, some type of, of system if you will and and build this together and she's like well we already have been yet so I'm like yeah but it would be really cool if we can bring this thing to life right because every creative idea can usually spark something else can, I love that one uh, can spark something else completely different right these cards use so much ideology in such great ways from charms to uh, layers to paper dolls to backdrops. So I said, all right, Paula, then what are we, what are we gonna do? What, what do we need to do? So first we wanted to build a size. We wanted a size that wouldn't be as big as the vignette box, something a little bit smaller, um, something that would just be a little bit more consistent for the maker so things didn't have to be uh, as wide. They could be a little bit narrower that, that have more of that perspective of, of a playing card, right? So we created this skew of file cards. Again, this is made out of mixed media, heavy stock, same paper as that folio, same paper that's in the distress line. But what you get in here, even though they're called file cards, okay, what you need to understand is you're going to get four of these little pockets, right? So these pockets are already built, they're already glued, they're already ready to go. You can stamp on them, you can ink them, you can do whatever, right? These are just pockets to put things in. Then you have four cards. These are just cards because if you wanted some of the paper, maybe you want to stamp or die cut. We just wanted to give you some of that paper if you wanted to do your own thing. These cards are not designed to go into this pocket as is, right? It's because everything is the exact same width that fits into this box. So if you wanted these cards to go into the pocket, you would just need to trim off a little bit of the edge and then they could go in. But you could put flashcards in these pockets, all sorts of things, right? Then we also included folded cards, right? Because maybe you do want to create something, maybe it's good, again for a junk journal that has some inclusions that have little fold outs or that you want to tape the edge and make a pocket that goes in on the side, a little horizontal pocket. So you get four of those folded cards. So four pockets, four flat cards, four folded cards, and file cards. Again, it's just a single card with that, that file already die cut in there. So if you do want to create any type of divider, you have that, you don't have to add anything different. Uh, you don't need to die cut an edge. You can use your rub-ons or stickers, but there again, you can use these in with this vignette or not. But if you wanted to kind of go into creating this, this is the new vignette card file. So these guys, these are not removable. These are actually built in, right? It's cut out, glued in. So you have three spaces that all of these pockets will fit in and it gives you some wiggle room. So you can still kind of go off the edge with your ephemera elements. It's a great make. It's a great uh, project because it does allow you to create, but even more important, it's all about the details, right? Details matter. So this one also has that label pull, right? With little screws on there. So it's that antique. So if you wanted to paint or paper this or do anything, we wanted the ability that you could go in with a little screwdriver, remove the hardware, go in and do all of your painting or anything, and then put this back on. But that's what gives it that whole card file uh, aesthetic authenticity it's the details am i right tracy details matter so this is the vignette uh, card file really really cool system so a shout out to to paula for you know not only having the idea but seeing that idea uh, vamp into something that i think as a maker really provides uh, much more of a, a doable thing because now you don't have to cut the paper you don't have to worry about what fits corner around like everything is just done where you can take it and go to town and because it is mixed media heavy stock it will hold up to all of the collaging from collage paper, collage medium, uh, tapes, everything. So that is the new vignette. Really nice, really, really nice. 
Then we have this. This is the one that made uh, the everyday. So this is the vignette display panel. It's just a square panel. It's hollow in the back. So you could work from the inside or you can work on the outside. It's really meant to be this type of panel that would stand out from the wall. Uh, it's a great square because it, it just gives us a nice aesthetic to work on. You can use the collage tiles. So uh, these were the ones that I shared earlier. They're inch and a half. They fit perfectly uh, across. If you take all 36, right, because there's 36 designs, two of each, you can fill up the front of that. But you can do other things. You'll see from the makes. It's a great substrate. Uh, it just takes that, that kind of vertical or horizontalness of a tray and just gives us a square to work on. So this was released at Christmas, and I'm happy that it's part of the everyday line. I do love all the vignette skews because they are made out of wood that are hand charred. So each one has a, a different aesthetic, right? Different talk. But because it is charred and not stained, we can go over this with paint or oxide and actually pickle this wood without having any of that brown come off. It's just a beautiful, beautiful panel. I agree. Paul's like, I love a nine by nine panel. It's, it's a good one. Yeah, and I like that you can really work on the inside uh, or the outside of it. And because I was in the whole square vibe, yay, vignette squares. Now this may not seem exciting, but when you see the makes, you'll see why I'm more excited about this. So these vignette squares, they're just three square boxes. These are sized to work with the other vignette rectangles. You'll see that if you have the rectangles and the squares, you can actually put them together to build off of it. So it's like make your own shadow box, but they are three different sizes, three different depths, because as you get smaller, it gets a little, a uh, little shorter in there, but it's a, a great shape and you'll see some of the makes. I'm going to quit blabbing because I've got one more thing and we get into the makes. And that would be this. Again, I'm sure Tracy is probably tipping back a, a bottle of wine right now because of this one. This clock, I knew what I wanted, but it was, it was harder to, to create than we thought, to be honest. So for those that are familiar with the assemblage clock that we've had in ideology for years, it's a silver clock, it has glass on the front, it has those bells, those little feet, uh, and we've seen some great makes with that clock through the years. But as makers, and the makers will say, Nobody really liked making with that clock because it was hard to deal with. You had the glass issue, you had all these inside brackets, you had those bells that were at the top. If you disassembled it, it was almost impossible to, to build on, but it was cool. But after seeing how people use this type of structure for years, I was like, okay, I think it's time that the clock goes away. And trust me, the clock sells really well. So it was a tough call for Advantage to just let it go, right? Uh, to, to just move on. But I wanted to build something that to me had a, a much more classic style. First thing, I didn't want it just plain silver because as a maker, if you don't want to paint it, if you don't want to do anything to it, it needs to look finished. The other thing, the glass was insignificant because the glass limited how you worked. You had to work always from the back. The glass really kind of hindered from you building outside of the glass. If you did anything to it, you had to worry about the glass and you had all these brackets holding in the glass. Then we need to get rid of the bells but then it just, I was like, okay, then we just need to change the entire shape. So this is the new Curio clock, okay? Here's what it looks like, right? That's the beautiful make that, that Paula did that, that's on the box. It's a very cool clock, okay? Here's the whole idea. It's smaller than the other one, a little bit smaller. It is made out of metal, but it's with the maker in mind, okay? So that means that when you take it out, it is in a beautiful black matte finish, okay? So right out of the box, it's good to go. But you could do things to it. You could collage it, you can do all sorts of things. You're gonna see it's got this little divider in there, and then it's got this wonderful finish back. Again, the other assemblage clock was like a tuna can. It had a weird ring to put on there. This back is removable. It's just a friction fit. So you just grab that little rolled edge, and you just pull that off, right? The nice thing about this, of course, is that when you look inside, now we don't have all these little brackets and braces. There's only two screws on here, that's it. So if you wanna add a, a strip of paper or paint or fabric on the inside, it's so much easier for a maker to go in and add that strip of paper because you can go right over these screws. Or if you don't want the base, or maybe you wanna do the base a certain color and the clock a different color, you remove these screws, take off the base, you can paint it, collage it, and then reassemble it. And then we have this ring. Now this ring was really, this was the part that I was like, Tracy's probably rolling her eyes because Paul and I both wanted this detailed ring. If you look at any type of retro clock, this is actually one of the clocks from my studio uh, that I have up on the, the top shelf. I love the, the style of it, right? That it sits, it has that flared out base. It's got those little steps, but I also loved this ring. But as a maker, 
I also didn't want to deal with that ring. Like what if I wanted to do collage paper? What if I was going to do collage and want to wrap it around? That ring is going to be a pain in the ass. Sorry. I really was. So I just said, oh my gosh, I just slipped. I think it's the first time I've ever done that. YouTube is going to ban me. But really what it was is like, it was so frustrating to always work around things. And so I said to Tracy, how do we make it removable? And she's like, but you can't. You're either doing it or you're not. And I'm like, but there's got to be a way because otherwise as a maker, it's really not going to work. It's not going to fly. So what we've done, if you look at this, it is attached in there but it is designed to be removable. And that's really important, okay? So what that means is, as a maker, if you want this out, you take your fingers and you push down, right, watch. And that will pop that out. How this is attached, because it's important to understand, it's got very skinny black tape around the edges. Do you see that, okay? This is strong enough that it would stay in there, right? It's not just gonna fall out, so you can go in and, and glue that or collage but it also just lets you pop this out. Now we can go in and do all of our finish with any of the stuff that we want. You could pop it back in with this same tape because this kind of foam tape is very, very sticky, or you could still add your adhesive or glue. It goes in from the back. You'll see that ring fits on the edge, and then you just push it back in with your fingers and it's back in, okay? So it is important to, well, you'll probably remember more than anything about just what I said, but just the fact of like, oh my gosh, see, I got my point across. I said to Tracy, like, I'll tell them so they remember that the ring comes out because I, I don't want people to be like, oh my gosh, this ring just falls out. It's designed to come out because I really wanted a clock that was maker friendly, right? Maker friendly. Having a, a matte finish, so much easier to paint, right? Uh, than a gloss finish, right? But you could still paint it. You could spray paint it. You could do whatever. But the, the idea of removing this ring now as a maker, if I was painting, I was doing anything, I have no more masking. Nothing to do. If I want the base a different color, take that off. No masking. The back, again, no masking. And this just friction fits. It just fits in there, right? So now you can work from the front or the back as a maker. You can work in there and you could, uh, if you, any of those pieces that you just want glued, right? You can take your collage medium. You can put that uh, into that space, but you can take this back on or off, right? So if you wanted to drill through with tiny lights or you can glue that on and you can work specifically from the front. So that is the new Curio clock. Really excited about it. It's gonna be a great substrate. On to the makes people, on whoop, to whoop. the makes. Whoop, whoop. Here we go. <clears throat> so let's start with a clock, just so you can see the potential of having that clock, all right? Because I do love it. So with this, this is a, a clock that Jan made. Um, and all the makers, again, will be linked on timholtz.com. You'll see all the makes, you'll see the makers, you'll see the links to the makers. So I know many of them are gonna be sharing on social media. Many of them share tutorials, not all of them, but many of them do. But I think it's really good uh, when you're working on uh, seeing that finished look. The idea with the maker is that there's no limitation. So I don't ever want a maker to have to make and think, how do I put this in a tutorial? So sky's the limit. First, look at that finish. You guys recognize that? That is the colorized wood grain that we just released with Sizzix uh, in chapter one. Look at how cool that wood grain is around the clock. Jan, that is amazing, right? Just totally transformed it, right? Then adding some of the tape. You see that skinny tape? Right? There's that little ruler that you guys talked about, but see how it can just finish that paper edge because it's just a skinny uh, edge of the tape. There's that wonderful word plaque, the nails. So yes, okay, you have to maybe uh, drill a little hole to put those nails in, but see how cool those little tack nails are instead of just using a brad? Uh -huh. So good. A little crackle paste, some grit paste, but then when you look inside, ah, uh, magic. Look at that. Tiny lights for the win, right? Because all you have to do is you can just... Uh, take those tiny lights and go in from the back. There's our mini lantern, but look inside how beautiful. There's our pocket watch. There are the gauge dials. So there's the compass because they fit right into that pocket watch. A little moss, some little Sizzix die cut, some little crackle in there because now you have the ability to really build in there. You don't have that glass over the top that's going to limit that. Take off the ring. See how that ring is alcohol inked, right? Because you can pop it out. You can alcohol ink it to change any color you want. And I mean, how cool is that as a clock. Now that, that's a, a clock, right? That's the cool Curo clock. It took all of the really 
the, the reservations of working on something and made it so maker friendly. And this could be themed a bazillion ways, but I do. I love that clock and I love the, the whole outdoorsy vibe of that. There's a little stick in there too, you can see. Just cool. So see how easy it is just to put paper inside because it's a strip. So great make, Jan. Great make. Then here is a vignette tray that Stacy created. I love seeing all of these things. So first you're gonna see a lot of newness, right? And you're gonna understand the whole idea of scale and why we added so many things uh, to the ideology line. So our vignette trays, there's two different sizes in this. This is the larger one. They come two in a set, but it does give you a great foundation. Now, of course, you can work on the inside, right? You've seen many projects on the inside, but never forget on the vignettes that you can just use it as a panel. It hangs off from the wall. It actually can sit up, right? You can add all of your texture around the edges, but here you can see that portrait, right? That big scale of that to tell the story. There's the baseboard windows. I love those portholes right there from the baseboard windows. The gauge dials fit in those portholes as well, right? So those circles, even though you're like, oh, it's just for the frame. No, it's that perfect circle that fits baseboards, fits the pocket watch, fits the gauge dials and then just all of the layers of ephemera. See what I was talking about, that little arrow and how you can hang off charms? Stacy's so good. And then leave your story, nails, nails, tack nails for the win, you guys. Don't, and, and find yourself something really cute to put them in because it makes it even better, those little nails. But I love just seeing all the layers, that, that curled paper edge, just so much great texture in this. Stacy. and there's the little ephemera number strips, right? See those little details? Cool make, right? So cool. I know the grunginess is like everything. That little bit of shatteredness, good stuff. Really, really cool. All right. Take a look at this. This is the vignette display panel that Emma created. Absolutely beautiful. Again, you see the portrait. The paper doll portrait is kind of the star of the story. It's so stunning in so many ways. And utilizing the backdrops, right? So there's that music backdrop with that little uh, curled paper the sewn edge. Emma, this is just absolutely charming. There's a little bit of that, that linen tape, right? See just that little, and I love, look at the pin, look at that great detail. See, I see these makes for the first time, guys. So when I point things out, it's because I'm just seeing it myself. I'm like, oh, look, look at that. Uh, there's a stitch scrap, right? I love that little quote seal. Look at that beautiful flourish. See what I was talking about? Having those adornments that are just big statement piece and just such a stunning portrait over that window, I love the mica. And then just using a lot of pieces from ephemera, uh, the layers botanical, beautiful. Here's a little, it's one of those uh, pocket cards, right? So you see that little collage piece, pocket cards mixed with backdrops, right? That's such a beautiful, beautiful make. Isn't that stunning? So good. I love the, I love the texture and detail, right? That to me is, is so good. So if you're sewing, you know, leaving all the threads there, but also letting that paper curl. Because I think so many times as makers, right, we're frustrated of like, oh, we got to glue it to the edge. Man, embrace imperfection. Just put that on there. There's a little bit of those, et cetera, trims to build that. Stunning, stunning, stunning make. Next, we'll get into a mini book. So Susie created this mini book and Susie does a great job on YouTube. I think Susie and Marlise both go in uh, and they, they do most of the, the mini books for ideology. And they go on YouTube, a lot of times they'll do an entire walkthrough of their books because obviously in a live, I can't do it justice with so many different details. Uh, but this is a great book that Susie did using the mini file folders, right? So if you look at the structure of the book, it's all made with the file folders. And then it's bound together using the linen tape. So you can see that, that binding of that linen tape where she has that cool technique of using those strips to hold it all together. So the entire book is bound together, but its foundation uh, are the file folders. So as you go through, you can see so many things. There's our, our baseboard window frames, little paper dolls, because now with that smaller scale, you can just include them in different areas, just tuck them in. You can see creating a pocket, right? So you can have pocket cards coming out of little elements. And that's the thing about a mini book. There, there's so many things that they do that's like, I can't possibly open and pull out and tuck and that's the, that's the joy of seeing the makers and really what they, they do with that. But take a look at the flashcard, right? I love how he's just leaning on that L. See these mini paper dolls, they're gonna be cute guys. They are, I mean, I, I think that it was time that they came back because putting them uh, in different areas, really great. A Little bit of fabric, there's a curator label. Again, pocket cards just doing some sewing. But I think that these file folders do make 
uh, a very cool uh, element for bookmaking, right? Gives you that great foundation to make. There's the snapshots in there. There's the remnant rubs. So another great thing about remnant rubs is that sometimes, especially on coated paper, if you try to stamp, you don't really get that rich black uh, transfer. And that's the cool thing about remnant rubs where it just looks like a stamp. Here's that call collect. The number strips, the dials. See, so many cool details uh, in this book. And I love the different size of folders as well. All right, little collage tiles. I love seeing these little guys just sitting on, on the little flashcards. They're so cute. I love that size of paper dolls. Then we've got the portraits, but you see what I was saying that because of that scale, you can add different elements, right? You can add layers. There's our, our little flare. That's great. Mm -mm. So beautiful. All the pieces. See, no regret. I love the details of that. I, I can only imagine the time in a mini book, but I think that's why people love uh, doing junk journals as well, because it just, it allows your creativity to just escape. And I, I'm always fearful. I'm like, can I, Pull this. Okay, I'm going to. Look at that. Oh, uh, see, that's one of the ideology salvage tags, right? So there's a whole skew of just different tags. What a great, great way to incorporate a tag and have that tucked in there. Love those guys sitting on that, that little window. Oh, here's another one. I hope. See, whenever I think that, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Oh, no, see? See? It's part of the other page. I'm sure Susie's on the other side going, no, don't, don't pull that one. Um, just really cool to see the layers. See, that's why I always say to Paul, I'm like, I'm afraid to just yank something out because I'll rip it off, rip it off a page. Uh, so there's the snapshots. Again, the tags. Look at that. Those are stencil chips. There's a word key. Little hardware head. That's always a great, uh, those little mini hardware heads from Ideology. Sometimes if you have something like in this case, this key, and you're not hanging it on something because it's not wood, right? It's paper using a little hardware head to fill in the blanks, fill in the hole, it just gives it purpose because it makes it look like it is screwed onto the paper. So that's really why those hardware heads are, are cool. That's a great idea. I'd like to say I designed them to fit inside there. I didn't, but I'll take it. I think that's great. Again, the scale of the portraits, the ephemera, just beautiful, right? A great, great thing. Oh, there you go. There's that skinny tape. I love that. Claim for errors, really cool. Right. Okay, yeah. well, you know, I'm trying. That, I just, it's so cool. Love that. Love seeing that book out of that. Then take a look at this great little story. So Zoe created this dome, ideology display dome, right? It sits up, but I'll hold it sideways just so you can see the, the wonderfulness of ideology and the new elements to capture a story. So there's that quill in the background. You can see that. There are the little mini books, right? Just using the ephemera to create those little books. There's a pen nib. That's also, and then that little coin, that's from one of the adornment SKUs we uh, launched last year. I love that. See, life itself is the most wonderful story. A little string, a little bit of that tape, and then just put on a, a vintage lid. So even though it comes on a cork, right? If you have any type of vintage elements, whether it's a, a little jelly jar lid or anything, you can really create just a charming display, display piece. But how beautiful is that, right? Beauty in simplicity. Creating those little books. See that little book cover with that butterfly? That's in the ephemera pack. So great. There's a little nail. See? Tack nails for the win. If you look for them, you'll find them. They're like little Easter eggs, right? They're everywhere. Those nails are just, they are magic. But a great make. I love the Zoe. See? It's just, it's beautiful. The little vintage elements in that quill is just, it's, it's a stunning piece. I do love it. Really cool. Then going on to the stories. Tammy B created this. This is so cool because these, these are, I believe they're vignette boxes, right? Oh yeah, they are. They are vignette boxes that Tammy turned into books, right? Creating this effect. I think that's so cool to take those wooden boxes and make a stack of books. And then here, right? You have that card file, that box that has the divide. Now, nothing wrong with taking off the hardware, right? Because of the screws, you can take it off. So if you still like the size and shape of that little vignette and you like the little shelves, you don't have to use it as a card file. You can say, oh, I just love it that it's like a, a little bookcase. I'm going to take off that hardware piece. And this is what she created, a whole little uh, library that just, again, live your story. So if you look at the details, here you can see that trim tape that I was telling you about, that it goes right on the edge of any of the vignettes, because all those vignettes are the same thickness of wood. So that tape goes right on there. And then look at all these books that she created, again, using uh, the books from Ephemera. I love that. Little deco frames, the pins, little bouquet flower, 
little portrait in there again with the deco frames a little heart adornments i love this with these bookends right the adornments treasures the the little dog and the camera these are old school ideology charms but i love how she turned them into uh, bookends with those books on the top how great is that and then take a look at how she collaged this vignette look what, it, what it's collaged in shut up snapshots for the win See, so just collaging, just cutting parts of the snapshots and then using all of those remnant rubs. See that bold typography? That's what was so great about that set that you can just use them everywhere. Isn't that so cool? Just to take snapshots. So even though it's a snapshot, it's a photo, you don't have to use it as a photo. Cut it up and use it as your background paper. This is absolutely phenomenal. So cool. Just, I love the detail of that. But just to show you like, Two, just two different ways that you can work with uh, books, you know, whether you're doing the, the bookcase or whether you're doing the, the dome. I'm just going to get the dome real quick. See, look at that, right? So yeah, you could do the whole library. You can do all the books or you can just create something uh, just charming. So it's really important when you're watching these lives, right? Because I know ideology, like it, it's all over the place. I don't want anyone to ever think for ideology that you have to do this elaborate thing. If that's your jam, if you really like to be captured into the story, do that. But there's beauty and simplicity as well where you can take that idea and just hone in on that little aspect of that and just make something. So I love when I see from the makers that they create at all different uh, levels of the story, right? Meaning, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build all of this and I'm gonna have it, an entire story wrapped around. It's like, I love the idea of the books and I'm gonna hone in on that and just create that little, that little bit about the story and life. So two very cool things when it comes to, to making. Then when we go into that card file, right? Sharon created this one. And I think what's really important to also understand when it comes to ideology is that these are foundational pieces that you can do whatever you want with it, whatever your style is. Uh, Sharon, definitely more of a colorful maker. She likes using color and card making. And I love the idea for what she created uh, in this card file. It's just, there's different seasons of different card ideas. I love how she did the flashcards and look how she used the distress embossing glaze to color them, right? So cool. Using the pockets, right? So taking those pockets, covering them, adding portraits over there. There are the label stickers. You can put the flashcards in there. And this could be a card keeper, right? So if you're a card maker, you can make little cards or, or maybe elements for cards and you can file that in there. I'm sure Sharon has an entire story behind it of, of the, the story or theme behind as a, as a card keeper. But I also love how she used that metallic. Look at that. And just scuffed it up and did the big remnant rub on there for those divided tabs but so fun to use those portraits and stickers. And also, whether you're taking the papers or whether you're doing the pocket cards, you can use all of these different elements. I love that glaze. The glaze on those flashcards, that's amazing. So good, right? Just taking all those pieces, gauge dials, stickers. So when you open this up and you think, well, how do I use all this stuff? This is one of the great things about uh, this particular type of project is that you can create these, and these could be cards or tags that are ready to go. Right, so these are cards in and of themselves. You just make them and fill it up and you're like, okay, I need a card, okay, great. I can write that, or hey, I, if it's just a, a paper, oh, I need a card front, okay, great. I'll glue this on a card, right? Or maybe I'm just gonna write a message on the back. There's many things that you can do when it comes to uh, creating your own design element. Look at that with the quill. They're so beautiful, aren't they? Love it. I love seeing just the, the variety and, and stylisticness of, of the makes. Repetition is key. I would say like when, when you find something that works, just repeat that. Open up those things and, and do all your backgrounds and then go in and add all your portraits and then add your stickers and you are still gonna create just some beautiful, incredible makes. Sharon, this is so cool. Look at this one with that big adornment. Oh, see, I told you, statement piece. Wherever that is, you're just gonna notice it and just, oh, so good, so good. And just seeing all the papers, right, with the marble backgrounds, the little curator, the ephemera, just, yeah, so much fun. Great use for that. And then again, just the using the backdrops with those numbers and then just doing the glaze, adding that color. It's a fun way to do the card file. So even if you wanted to actually create little cards that you can use for components, if you're a card maker, it's a great way to 
compartmental make, right? Where you have all those elements ready to go. Just beautiful. And then again, there's that little skinny tape. Then we'll go into this book. Marlise created this one. Absolutely fabulous to see uh, that box, right? That base box. So here's the vignette square box. Look at that. Look at the detail of just those nails. You don't have to nail the box together, but the fact that she did and kind of folded some over, it just makes it look like an old box that this book came in. I think it's really cool how it's done. So here you have uh, the word key, right? The new word key painted, grunged up. There are the new transparencies, those big wings. But then when you take this, it's, it's attached to some fabric. And when you pull this, that's what lifts the book out. So this is actually in the box. I thought that was really a clever way to, to have that, that square book. But instead of trying to dig that out, that you can just lift this, and, but it's still a, an accent when it's all together. How clever is that? Sheesh. Sheesh. I wouldn't have known that Paula told me that, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't have known probably how to, how to even open half of these books, right? So this, I'm, <laughs> Paula will be like, no, no, no. You're doing it wrong. No, you slide this off, right? It's a band that goes around this book. Right, there you go. All these threads. And here you can see this is just such, I mean, the detail, the amount of papers. And this, I, I think, again, the love of, of a junk journaler where you can just tear and sew and glue uh, and have all sorts of little pockets where you can have ephemera pieces that pull out, right? You can use your stickers. You can actually build this by just taking your papers and creating other elements, right? I think, okay, this comes out some way, I'm sure. Paula will probably tell you. I'm gonna just, <laughs> I'm gonna, Be careful. I, no, I'm gonna untie this. Oh yeah, okay, good. I'm gonna untie this. So when you open this, I know Mario's like, be careful. When you open this, here we have those portraits. Just gonna hold this side first. But look at all those pieces. So I always think like when I see Marlies work, like all these layers, so cool just to have them on there and all those threads because, well, I just, I love that whole chaos of the threads. But everything down to just those little curator labels in there, those little pops of color and typography everywhere. And then, again, I think you guys are really going to love working with the portraits because you have that, that large focal point. You could still use paper dolls, right, with them. It's not either or, but it is nice that you can add that, that element to the story because you have that much bigger component. This looks like it comes out. Yeah, it does. I'm not sure. Well, I'm taking this out. All right. Great card. Wow. See, just all those pieces just layered together using a little ideology mini clip. So cool. All right. So this little book that I untied, right? Because this, this appears to be attached in there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I'll hold this up so you can see. Look at all of just those little details. There's a tape. There's that the linen tape in there as well as the design tape, the mini paper dolls little paper pieces, the labels, see, just labels as an accent, right? Sometimes people think, what do I do with all those snippet labels? Well, it can just be something that you glue on, right? It can just be an element, but having all the different scales of pieces, I think that's what's going to be uh, so cool and so fun for all of these types of, of books and journals that you can add elements to it. And I love just how the signatures are stitched together. Some of the paper is just like an inked thinner paper and some is actually a thicker paper. I love that as well really add some nice texture. Look at all those details. That's what I said, like making a book just hours and hours, but it's a, a wonderful creative escape. So sometimes uh, people like to do journals with inks and paints and uh, stamps and stencils. And sometimes you can just take all of your pattern paper and ephemera uh, and elements and just really go to town. I think that's good. Absolutely love that. So cool, right? Great, great element. I think this Oh, and this little book, oh, this whole little thing slides out. Look at that. Woo hoo. Oh, see, I could have just held it. Now that I, thanks Marlies, I was just reading the chat, so cute. Then you have a little element and then, oh, I see that now. Then you have this little piece so that you could just tuck that under. Wow, man, the engineering alone, right Mario? Really, to me, it was just the key where Paul is like, lift up the key, pull the key to remove the book. I'm like, I don't understand. Yep, now I do. Fabulous, what a fabulous make. Seriously, just so cool. That goes around, that goes in the box. So goals right there, right? Absolute goals. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So when it comes to the boxes, right? So you saw uh, that, that a great foundation for uh, working uh, as 
some type of box for a book or anything, but the boxes themselves can also be great art pieces. So Paula took the, the vignette squares and created three art panels. Seems like a magic trick, wasn't it? You're like, what did he just do? Taking those three nested box boxes and creating three different collage panels. I'm gonna go through each one because each one is its own idea of of fabulousness, but you can also, you know, put them, display them, stand them up, hang them on the wall, right? So the nice thing about that edge is that it does allow you just to, to place that. But let's just go through and talk about the finish of each one, right? So here, take a look at the background. So Paula used those, those number strips, the ephemera strips, because they're all the same strip, and just did a tile work of all those different numbers. What a great background, right? Just take all those, little mini paper doll tinted in pure perfection, right? And then a little clipping sticker. They now stand on the brink, very cool. But I love just seeing those uh, as a collage. A great use for all those strips because uh, you saw Marlies had those just uh, in the book, but using them as a background, they're amazing because different typography, different colors. So that is a great background to use the ephemera. Then we have that tape. So remember when I talked about uh, creating a patchwork, so here, uh, Paula took the tape and then created a patchwork, stitched it, and then used that as a background. So now you have a fabric quilt, if you will, as a background. But now let's look at the foreground. Here we have that snapshot of the house. Paula went in, did a little fussy cutting. Super easy to cut around a house, right? Probably not as easy to go on the porch, but great job, Paula. She went in with the porch. Um, and then added uh, the mini paper dolls in front, right? How charming is that? So force perspective, you have uh, the buildings, whether it's a house, the cabin, whatever, and then adding those mini paper dolls or even the larger paper dolls, depending on how big uh, your make is, that's another great use for the snapshot. Some of those pieces, whether it's a house or a car or anything like that, right? Really cool. And again, the air is full of sunshine. Charming, whole nother idea. And then creating a background using collage tiles, right? So the collage tiles, inch and a half square you just go in and start gluing those down you can add the little trim tape in between i think that's really clever just to add that tape in between right then we have the portrait there are the wings right the transparent wings how beautiful is that to layer behind those and then adding that beautiful beautiful the elusive creature right so such a great way to again use those new elements but in totally different ways using pieces that could be ephemera as a background tape that could stick something down as a background and collage tiles and layer that portrait over the top. And again, different scales of the portraits, but love it, right? Great make. And you have those three boxes. So what a cool set to, to gift to someone, right? Making them a, a trio of art panels. Just wonderful, really, really wonderful. So another great thing about working with the boxes and what I was uh, talking about, Zoe created this one uh, and I love the whole steampunk vibe of it, but also, I love the idea of connecting the boxes. As I mentioned, the size of the squares are the same size as the standard rectangular vignette uh, boxes that we've had in the line. So this allows you to take those boxes and create new collages. And what's cool about this one, you can see, she used one box one way, one box the other way. So now you have the inside, there's little tiny lights. Let's light this thing up, because we can. Oh yeah. Uh, so here you can take the box, but now by flipping the other box, Zoe created that panel. And I love the whole idea because it gives you a foundation to build on and a vignette to embellish inside, right? Or they could both face one way or the other, but the three largest ones of the vignette boxes, you can attach to any part of those other three boxes to really build on, which I think is important. So if you have the regular vignette boxes, they work with the squares. If you don't, keep that in mind that you could then build your own uh, size of a vignette to work with. Here you can see the gauge dial. Look at that. Ooh, love that little embossing enamel on there. Really grunge it up. There's the gauge dial under there. The gears. I love that wheel. The machine heads over the little strip. There you can see that mini dome. And it's okay if that dome comes off the edge, especially if you're doing a box like that, right? Because when this is sitting up, it is great to have that perspective, but it's nice to have uh, a dome that will also work. These are the test tubes, right? We did the test tube for uh, Halloween. So you can use that. And then the other mini cork dome. So we, we even have smaller cork domes in the line, but now you can see all the different sizes of glass in there. I love the little entomology insect, the toadstools, the curator label, 
tiny lights really bring this whole thing to life. There's a little optical lens in the background. There's a the new backdrop. And then just adding those elements, the little flowers in there. It's just like a whole little experiment area. And then look at those nails. Mm, mm, mm. So nails, they're decorative. Yes, they could have a purpose, but the nails also just so cool, right? Look at the detail. And I love the pops of color too. I think that's also really great that you, you see here, it's very industrial, grungy. And then uh, all of the little specimens and experiments, they have that little pop of color, which you just use uh, that, that bright green glaze on the, on the bug there, colored the, the flowers and just those labels, those curator labels, guys, you just, once you use them, once you break open that bag and you have them there, you'll see that they just add a whole uh, little bit of, of sophistication to everything it really does gives that so much more more detail more interest love it then here is another one emma created this so i'm going to just start just to kind of show you the the overall this is about again taking that vignette square and using it with the other sizes of vignette boxes right so emma created this this is the square on the top and these are the other boxes so tammy turned hers into books uh, Emma just used these and kind of uh, offset them, covered these with paper, but isn't that, you can see the whole charming little story, but let's take a look. You can see the collage tiles in the back, right? With the little portraits, there's a little flare, a little mini hardware just to add that to the top. Again, adding some elements, but then when you look in here, we've got all the little books, right? Little school days. I love the open book and the mini clip. See those little details? Uh, the pen nib, look at that little book that's tied with that little key. So cute, Emma right? Little blocks back there. And then a bottle, a little cork file, a little tea. I love that, right? The pen nib, a little paintbrush, just a great little uh, charming story. And then when you spin it around, more bottles. So it's like, it's like a whole back to school, whether you went to, to science class or art class, English, math, all these little elements. And this is all ideology. These are the laboratory glass, right? So this is, I love how that stuff is just oozing out over the top. Kind of spilled that totally reminds me of science class in school where you just you couldn't wait for something to foam out of the glass um, then you have the tiny cork vial so all these pieces are everyday ideology so even though we bring in new stuff the importance is bringing in new to spark the excitement of what is available right what's out there and here there's that oh, so this is the, the i'm gonna guess that's the the, the divided box yes yeah because there's that little hardware there very cool use of that it's like a, going to the library right getting out your School forms, a little trim tape, so cool. And little hardware heads for the win. You could use hardware heads, you can use nails, but what a great, what a great make. Just with the whole story. That's the thing about ideology as well. It just allows you to take these elements and just explore with your imagination. Just run wild, tell whatever story. You make up the story, make up the story, make up the people. Or if you have photos uh, or your own uh, personal keepsakes, you can definitely include those uh, for yourself. For sure. That's charming. Amazing, right? I'm just seeing the comments. It's like, it just, it's amazing what people make. It, yeah, it's just amazing. So speaking of story, Tammy B created this curio clock and it's a, uh, I think she it was called a hobbit, hobbit hole or something. It's like, I don't know the whole story, but Tammy is a great storyteller and she will tell it on her blog, but it's like a little hobbit hole, but how she, how she took the clock and kind of flip flopped it really. She took the back of the clock, made it kind of the front, right? If you've seen that, look at those little bricks that she made. If you follow her uh, on social, you, she was talking about making all these little bricks. So she did this brick work around the back of the clock and used the back, did the, the wood grain to actually be the door, right? Taking some wonderful little die cuts. This is all cut out from the paper, right? All that botanical uh, paper from the backdrops. Did some moss, look at all that wonderful grit paste, right? Just really made it grungy covered it with moss. And then the front of the clock is like the inside of that. So I'll just hold it so the light gets in there so you can see, but look how charming. She did a little dresser, little matchboxes with some, some of that linen tape, tiny little books on there. She's got the drippy candles. If you have any drippy candles left over from the season, right? Put a little drippy candle. There's a little porthole window, window in the back. And then if you look inside, I don't know if you guys can see on the inside, all the detail. There's the broom from Halloween. I love seeing that wood in the back, right? The using that wood grain paper to kind of divide the wall. It gives it that old school vibe. There's one of the 
the cork vials and just the rolled up papers. It's a, just a great way of telling stories, but also a way that, again, if you have stuff from Halloween that you didn't use or any of those trinkety bits, it's about taking those elements, ideology or just fragments of ideas, honestly, that you can put together to tell your own creative story. Just re but a great way to use the new clock, right? The fact that we've got this clock that now is so much easier to work with, right? Because you can work with the back its own way and you can work from the front without the glass. It really does uh, allow storytelling uh, a whole next level of that, I think. Then we have this, this is like a double handed. This one's hefty, this is. So take a look at what Vicky created with the clock and the vignettes, right? Just her steampunk loving heart. And I actually had to email her uh, to get some details because I, I've said this before, when Vicky does some make, sometimes I just think like, I don't think this is mine. Like, I don't think this is my stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I'm like, did you, did you really use this? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just has a way of, of creating with it. So the foundation, the square of this, this is the new vignette square box, but you'll see inside is the clock. But what's missing from the clock is the base. I felt, I thought that was very clever. So because it's just screwed on, she took out the two screws, right? Base comes off. And now that clock fits into that vignette square box, right? I couldn't believe it. She's like, yeah, it just drops right in. So because the base is removable with screws, you don't have to use the base. Like how, how great is that to, to just be able to go in and add the, those little elements. And you'll see so many different features, right? Uh, the, the finish just unbelievable. So this, gritty, grungy, rusty finish. This started with the metallic craft stock, you guys, the silver metallic craft stock. Then that's grit paste. And then Vicky does her magic with inks and paints. These are all hardware heads, right? Just look at the finish on the whole outside. I mean that I like, I want a class on rust, right? Just on that. Then you can see just how she incorporates. So here, this is uh, one of the, the gauge dials, right? The gauge frames. But then this is one of the pulls that we did. So she actually put two pieces together and create this whole new weird little hardware piece. And then in there, there's date dials. Can you guys see those with the numbers? Those are from the clocks. Then she's got this rusty mesh. And take a look at how she did the remnant rubs on that rusty mesh. Remember when I talked about remnant rubs working? Yeah, you can apply rub-ons to a metal screen and look how it picked up the texture of that screen through the rub-on. That is brilliant. That never put a rub-on on a piece of uh, rusty mesh, but how cool is that, that you can put that on there. And then here you have the new uh, mini display dome. She's wrapped some tiny lights around there and just created kind of almost these little like radio resistors, transistors, whatever they are. They're like her own creation of imagination because we've got that that new small display dome, there's a pulley wheel, pointy finger. See, there's that little call collect. Can you guys see that? And there's a mini paper doll back there. And you see the trim tape? I love how the trim tape is also used. You can see even on these test tubes where she kind of wrapped one of those gauge dials, those paper ones, slid it in there, and then added that tape. I mean, there's so many details when you look inside. There's uh, one of the letterpress, just so cool. And again, because on that clock, you can pop that out you got the different finish, but yeah, it's like a clock radio and then full of wonder. Oh my gosh, take a look at the quills. I just noticed that. How cool. Look how those quills come out from that stick and just give that, oh, I'm totally taking that idea. That is a good one. Yeah, it really gave it a great deco vibe, right? Almost like wings. I love it. It's just, wow. Imagination, right? With a clock, a box, some metal, some glass, some lights and a whole lot of loving for grunge, right? Unbelievable, that's the, that's the power of ideology. You can go from you know, making a, a little hobbit hole and, and little books out of ephemera to, to making radio tubes out of glass and using decorative tape, wrapping some lights, just wow. You know how good so that's cool. gonna look when I nail it to my table? <laughs> there you go. It's gonna look so good on my table. And he nails it to the table. Uh, it's a fun joke, huh? Yeah. It is. Uh, Jan created this beautiful card keeper. She has all the little months. I'll just kind of show you where you can see it goes from January on through the year. Again, another way that, that you can add some charm. These are the ideology foundation, right? Just adding those foundation feet to the box. So uh, it sits up off the table. Just thought that was really, really pretty. 
But all of these you just go through and it's like a card keeper, right? Whether you're putting little dates or uh, card ideas, but she's got all the, she went through all the different ephemera and labels and found all the, all the months, right? Whether she clipped it off from things, man, Jen, that was a serious hunt, right? But I love, again, using the pocket cards, whether they're the files or the cards, using these little elements, right? So you can see the portraits. There's that linen tape where it just adds that perfect touch of fabric, just stuck down, right? Adding the keys, the flashcards, right? And I love how this is just taking, oh, this is taking up one of the file folders. Do you guys see that? So I recognize this, but that's the mini file folder cut. And now you actually have a totally different pocket. So cutting that in half, you can fit that. That's a really great idea. Great, Jan. Very cool to put that in there. See, there's just so many ideas of how you can use things, right? Open up the little cards. I don't want to get this out of order because she has it in a beautiful order, but I do love the flashcards and all the, the different tags. So let's say you're just trying to create little uh, gifty elements for a certain month or birthdays. You can just make those elements and keep them in here. And then when you're ready to make cards, you can pull those out and, and use those. But yeah, what a great use for the that folder. Wow. But I love the details of using the pocket cards, using the the flashcards, again, the tape, portraits. You just see so many little details, right? All these little things are going to be curator number strip. Like when you see them on there, there's one with the little mini paper dolls. So great. This is just fun, right? How fun just to go in and take those elements. Using your favorite Sizzix, right? Take any of your dies or folders, add those cards. So even if you're making cards, love that. Look at all these little tags just with stuff, right? Elements that you want to create with. Look at that. So good. See, this is the kind of make that you can just like, I don't know, you just escape to really because you're just making for the sake of having fun, right? You don't have to make some specific finished thing. This to me is pure inspiration, guys. And that's what that's what the live is about. You can see the new ideology stuff. And yeah, you need, you know, it does require some explaining just to talk through it. But I think the makes are where you can see all of those random paper pieces uh, go together. doesn't really matter. Look at that little pocket just stitched out of that collage tile, right? and then adding those little pieces in there. Really great. And great use for those flashcards just to be that, that foundation of, of the pocket. Great, great make. Again, another element, another fun element. Jeez, moving, just moving right along. Yeah. So this, thank you for doing this one, Stacy. I talked about this in the Maker Zoom about that what I love about the vignette card file is yes, it is a great card file. You've seen it, you saw you know, the cards going in it, you've seen it stand up where it became uh, a vignette element like that, that Tammy did. But I said, I think what's really cute about this because I'm a collector of junk. I love little knickknack things. Um, and I said, I just think it'd be so great to create something that was themed that you could sit on a table or gift to a friend or using it in display based on whatever that person collects. And I know that Stacy loves uh, buttons and threads. And I said, I just think it'd be charming if you just did a little sewing themed uh, vignette and that is what she did so thank you for for doing that and just making it absolutely beautiful I don't want to tip it upside down completely but you can see on the side there's all little bits of papers and ephemera little fabric scraps and buttons and lace just attach right onto that again because this comes off you can take it off you can either use the screws or she went in with tack nails and tack that on but the whole outside of this box has all the wonderful papers from the pocket cards, right? There's some great uh, sized patterns in the pocket cards. So remember that even though they're cards, you can still just cut them up and use it as pattern paper. And then just use that box. I love the little pin cushion. Look at how charming that little pin cushion is, right? With the pin. So one section is a pin cushion. Then we've got the little spools of thread and the thimble, right? Some little needles, right? Little sewing needles in that cork vial. And then her scissors in there a little vintage salt shaker with buttons, some button cards back there, but how great, because this could, this could be functional, certainly, but also it's just a great story. It just tells a perfect story for someone. So as a maker, sometimes you do need that story or that theme to really spark the creativity in that. And that's what I love about ideology. It provides the products to do so, but then you can use your own elements and it just ties in perfectly. It melds, uh, authentic vintage into uh, the ideology world of, of all of our vintage reproduction. So 
It's so cool. I love it. It's a great make, right? So you could just think for, for any type of theme, whether they like, you know, outdoor stuff or cooking or whatever it is that they do. I think that's the, the beauty of that. It's about telling a story, right? So telling a story would be Paula, right? As I mentioned, and I'll say it again and again, Paula has such an influence on today's ideology, right? Ideology uh, has never been better since uh, Paula joined the team, honestly, because it, it just took it to a completely different level. And I've learned so much from her and been inspired. And we just kind of feed off each other's inspiration. And getting these products to market, right? It, it still has to make sense. You know, an idea could be great that we see uh, on Pinterest or an idea could be great that we've seen in a vintage magazine, but it's like, then how do we tell that story to the maker? How do we bring that product to where someone's gonna want to create with it? And Paula has a, an amazing way to also tell that story. And, and I challenge her a bit, I really do. I'm like, okay, we've, we've got to use this in, in that way that we saw that, but, but make it doable. And she created this, which I absolutely love. It's just, it's so cool. It's a tray, so I'm, I'm gonna bring it up close, but just so you can see. But it is a vignette tray, ideology matchbox, snapshots, a lot of other ideology elements from flashcards to bottles to the pocket watch to the gauge to uh, the, the baseboard, lost and found, the word keys, right? But the whole thing ties together as a story with these nails. And Paula's done uh, similar makes for years, and I, I love that detail. I haven't seen anyone do that the way she does, and I absolutely love it. So she just created a whole story centered around this house, right? So that's one of the snapshots, that silhouette, but then all the different people that have maybe lived in that house or uh, visited that house or passed through, and it's all about adventures. And their whole story is connected with this string. And the string is tack nails, right? So it just brings you through from, you know, the, the photo, the number block, that little group, maybe they you know, just got the key to the house. like. I can just envision the story without really any words, right? Other than life and how that just goes right through it. Like, see how she just punched the hole and put that thread right through? So just connecting all of that and then that little stitch on these. So then maybe they traveled, maybe they saw nature, there's some little bottles and then that just carries you through. It's just absolutely, it's just, yeah, that detail, that, I mean, pun intended, but it ties it all together. That And just seeing that string go through the boxes is even better. Like that's the brilliance of Paula, just connecting all that and the whole destination of where they're going. I just, I love the whole storytelling. And yes, these are snapshots from ideology. These maybe are, you know, people you don't know, but to me, that's the fun of it. That's the art of it. But at the same time, it could be photos from your family, right? You can always create this and then add a photo as you find it or add that little trinket as you get it. Or like this right here, this little map, that's one of the new backdrops, but it's like a little uh, neighborhood or street map on there. I just think that it's really, really cool, right? And then there is that, that tape that goes all the way around with all the numbers, that trim tape. It's cool, right? Such a cool make, such a cool make. Definitely check out the maker page. I see a lot of people asking about the makers. We have a maker page devoted to them on timholtz.com that has their blog, their Instagram. Uh, Mario keeps posting the link. So that is where you should go and look for the makers is go to the makers page and follow the makers. Check it out and see um, all of the inspiration that they share. It's just, it's, it's amazing. And Paula does a lot of kits as well. Um, she does kits for uh, many of her makes that she does for live. Sometimes it's just a make that she creates. And so, uh, if you if you check her out on social media or go to her blog, you can sign up for a list because her kits, they Man, sell out in a second. She sends out an email to people and because she only makes a certain number and once they're gone, they're gone. But she is a great way. I know there's a lot of people in here that uh, that have, have purchased her kits because it's like full instructions. Like it's like a storybook, color step outs, like everything. So anyway, very, very cool. Then this one, I just needed to share all these at once. These are all done from Sharon. They're all different ideas, but when I saw them all together, like I was so impressed, really, because, you know, we give Sharon the challenge of thinking as a card maker because Sharon makes cards all the time. And I'm like, we really want you to take ideology as a, a, from a card maker approach. And how would you make cards out of this stuff? Would you make cards? What would you do with it? And so her ideas for cards, Amazing. So I just want to put them all together. They're, they're different and some have multiples, but I'll just take you through. So Sharon, like uh, unbelievable. 
So here, look at the background, first of all. So that background are all those little curator labels. So if you just wanted to sit one day and take that entire pack of curator labels, get yourself a big sheet of whatever, mixed media, heavy stock, even chipboard if you wanted to, and just start gluing them all down and making your own collage background with just those little snippets. I mean, how cool is that, right? That's just, that's a great use. I mean, you've seen these on bottles and tubes and everything else, but a background, amazing. And then just taking the portrait, adding a little tint of color. They're the new transparent things, right? With those big butterfly wings. I told you we scaled them perfectly for that. And then just adding, I love those, I love those bands, I really do. I just, they, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's the typography, it's everything about it that I love. But then the little hardware heads, but what a great collage card for a focal point, just taking your elements. But then she just has ideas, right? So it's like a, a trio of ideas, if you will. So this one, this is taking the craft stock, right? So the nice thing about this, of course, is that it's craft paper, but then you have that that color that you can sand and ink. So the foundation of these cards, the ideology craft stock, because a hundred pound weight, right? Makes for a nice card base. But then again, repetition, right? Take here and work on those pocket cards. You've got those great backgrounds, right? Then you can add some elements, add the mini paper dolls, add a small flash card, add that little label sticker, a little sewing, even a little bit of that linen tape. And you repeat the same idea, right? So whether you're using pocket cards, backdrops, it doesn't matter. You can still take like a background paper, uh, an ephemera piece, a little bit of fabric, flash card, this paper doll, and just sit down and create cards. This is one of those things that imagine if you just had those elements and this idea, how many cards you can make in a sitting. A lot. And I'm not saying a sitting of 30 minutes. I'm saying a sitting of maybe a week, right? Where each, each night you do a different step. Like, okay, tonight I'm going to, I'm going to fold all my cards and I'm going to put the background down. And then the next one, I'm going to uh, select the paper doll with the flash card, right? And just get all those in piles, compartmental uh, thinking, right? The whole compartmental making is the, is the strategy. And then when you're ready, then you just assemble them, right? You do your stitching, you do your foam tape, you do your gluing. And before you know it, you have a great series of, of cards of any size, just taking, and they're completely unique. So I love that idea. I do love that idea for, for working with cards. Another idea, of course, is focusing on portraits, right? So you might not want to do the whole collage with all the ephemera because you think, wow, that's going to take a lot of time, but you can certainly go in and make cards using your backdrops, right? So you can take any of your cardstock and whether your card is an A2, whether it opens uh, vertically, horizontal, it doesn't matter. Taking that idea and saying, right, I'm going to start with a backdrop, then maybe I'll take another piece, maybe it's a layer, maybe it's something that I cut out. Taking any of your ephemera, this one I, I want to use those those bands, I want to use a portrait, but the same rules apply that you can compartmental make and create the most unique and cool cards. I love the splattering of paint, right? Over that on ephemera. It is, it, I love the idea of that because sometimes for people creating a collage, it's complicated, right? You get very overwhelmed, but if you just sit back and you take it step by step, that's the beauty of that. And I think Sharon has a great way of creating something very sophisticated in a very simple way, right? In a way of saying, all right, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make each one different, but I'm gonna use those same ingredients. And that to me is, is the magic. And I think that she's really embraced that challenge. She blew us away at Christmas and, and did it again for this release. So thanks, Sharon. I just, I love seeing uh, cards with ideology because we make so many things that are paper and simple embellishments, but I think a lot of times you'll look at ideology and think it's always a vignette box or it's always some little, you know, trinkety story. It doesn't have to be. It can really be uh, great elements, right, for, for cards. And then these, again, so brilliant, right? Taking those mini file folders and that's the card, right? So that is your foundation for a card. It is a card, right? It can open, it can do all of those uh, different elements. And the, the great thing about this, again, bigger foundation, well, you can use bigger things. So here taking this, uh, you can add that little element, right? A little snapshot on there because it's bigger. We've got that seal. We've got the flash card, right? Taking any of the ephemera pieces, they can go horizontal or vertical. It just depends on what it is that you want to create. Again, flash card, seal, snapshot. So I love how she created those cards working from snapshots, portraits, paper dolls. Did you guys kind of see? I'll bring those in again, just so you can see 
uh, the thought process now that you've seen them all together. But again, same paper pieces, right? As far as your assortment, but it's, it's how you paired them together. So whether you use the snapshots, that's this, or whether you did portraits, right? Those are the portraits or paper dolls, mini paper dolls, right? Get it. Same kind of idea, but just a great way to use them for cards. So that's why to me, as I was sorting, I'm like, uh-uh. It's more impactful if you see it all together because then you really embrace the idea of, hey, I can take any of that stuff and I can create cards uh, just sitting down and doing, doing that repetition. That's what I love. Love it. All right. So next we're going to get into this. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that I, there's no way I can do this justice. Otherwise, this live would be 12 hours, right? But right here, we have four makes using the accordion folio and each maker did totally different they did their own thing and what's really interesting is that like nobody really talked to each other about at least i don't think they did about what they were doing but when these got here i'm like oh my gosh i can't believe this is the same structure right that that plain mixed media folio but it transformed totally different ways to different maker styles so i'm going to go through them quickly just kind of show you some highlights but again if you want to see the details Follow the makers, check that out because they're gonna, they're really gonna talk through all of the, the elements and details that they did. So I have Marlise, Susie, Vicky, and Paula. So I'm gonna start with Paula and we'll just go through and just talk about the project. So that twill tape, this comes with that. So you can uh, use it, ink it. I love the idea of just adding a little eyelet to a flashcard and pin it on. See, flashcards for the win. Words are powerful, right? Okay. But then, she took that, so there's our, there's our folio. So this one opens, this one it looks like, oh, she sealed it with some eyelets, cool. So this still became like a flap that opens. Oh my gosh, brilliant. Um, and then this has a pocket, right? So this is, this is the folio itself, but because it is just that piece, we wanted to create something that you as the maker could easily collage on it. So let's just talk about the outside first. Here we have collage tiles. Right, so the fact that the collage tiles have pictures, collaged elements, paper elements, they're just squares, right? There's no, although it looks layered because I actually do the collage physically and then take the photo. So I don't do a digital collage. I, I glue it down and do crayon. So it looks super dimensional, but that's just a piece of paper. So having these tiles down really makes it look like, wow, I spent you know hours doing this front collage, but that's the beauty of the tiles. Then you see the tape. So adding that tape, even though this is already gusseted, adding that wider piece of tape makes it look like a book spine, right? But that's just on there. Then we've got those tiles that wrap all the way around, right? Going along the back and then continuing on the front. So all of these pieces, yes, you can add things if you wanted to, but that's the coolness of collage tiles. When you guys get it, it's just glue it down, crayon, there you go. This would be it. I'm not gonna push her, but like this would be a great class. Very cool. Um, <laughs> Paul's like, be quiet, Tim. Close your mouth. Um, so here, I love how she left this flap open. Again, taking that wide tape and the skinny tape on there. And then you've got just this other cool little tag. Thing. Oh my gosh, look at that. Stop it right now. Are those sewn on? Those are stitched. That's made out of thread. I thought those were beads or candy. Wow. I can. I'm a, it's some sort of little French knot, something. I don't know what it is. That's fancy. That was beautiful. Um, I love seeing those. Look how the photos just cut up and collaged. What a great idea. And rubs. See, you can see the magic of that rub skew. My gosh. <laughs> Lucky him. Isn't that great? I, what is that? That's thread. See it? I'll tell you soon. Okay. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Got distracted. That was cool. Then we have the ticket. So this is from the Ideology Ticket Book. Thanks for using these, P. One of my favorite SKUs, guys, and it's it's probably at least a year old, and I think people just don't use it, and I don't want it to go away. It's, she said it's French knots. You are good, Tim. Oh, is that what I said it was? <laughs> yeah, Woo. Yeah, I only heard you say candy. <laughs> wow. Well, um, so this is just the, so it's a whole book of these tickets, but I love how they're torn and stitched, and then again, there's that schoolhouse from the snapshots. Woo, so good. And then here, is this thing open? I don't know. I'm going to try. Yeah, took off the little clip, opens, little pocket with stuff in there. Oh my gosh, that's just, that's brilliant to just make another little pocket in there. Little stitching, oh man. All right, 
Oh, look, more candy. <laughs> more French knots. Look at that. French knots. That's candy. new. That's like a new thing, P. Okay, hold on. Before I get into that, I'm just going to open this. Look at those tickets. See, there's a whole book of these tickets, guys, that are already perforated. I don't know if you can find that book. It's old school, but I want to talk about it because I think it's going to go away if it doesn't get used. Um, but I think it's down there in that basket under there. But these are just tickets, um, and I love how they're just sewn on there. Oh, look. There they are right there. Here. Wow. That's really cool. Very cool. Look at that. No, that one right there. Yeah. Really cool. I think it might be there. Let's see. Let's just see if it's in there. Uh, if it's spiraling. No, nope, I don't have one in there. It might be in the garage. All right. That's all right. So take a look at this. So she's attached that accordion book in there. Then we have that whole book that just comes out, right? Take a look at that. So cool. So the nice thing about this is that we have the paper. And we've got all of those paper dolls, but look, there's all the little stitching, flashcards, tags, there's a backdrop, there's a little tag from the other side. So she's got both sides done. Look at that. Sheesh. Look at that. I can't get over that thread. That would take like forever. See, Paul is like, oh yeah, you watch. Forget tinting. I'm going to go in and just add little stitch things. My word. So cool. I love the clipping stickers where she just uses those names. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I know. Look at that. Oh, Harold. That's hilarious. What a cool... Yeah, see, I said I wasn't going to gush, but like, I was caught off guard by the little candies. Very cute. A charm all its own. Really adorable. But see, just a great use for that structure, because when you see that structure by itself, you think, what can you do? Just possibilities unbelievable collage tiles glue it on and then just uh, have fun and i love the idea of again having that attached so you know you, you can pull that out or it could be removable it's totally up to you that's a great book great book p this one this is vicky's i can tell by it's a it's industrialness right it's it's half i don't think i've ever seen vicky do a book but here we've got that that foundation right of that folio but this is all of the black craft stock Right. So the cool thing about that, as I mentioned, it is craft, but because it's black, you can sand it, you can wrinkle it. So all of that cool aged leather look is simply wrinkling, sanding, stitching, grunging. Wow. Cool. But it gives such a different vibe, right? Like a totally different masculine uh, book vibe to it. Whoa. This is cool. See, it's the first time I've seen it. So I probably should have looked at these before then I, I wouldn't have been wouldn't have been so gushy, but so take a look at how this is. So again, remember that the whole idea of that, that folio is that it opened. So this Paula had her stitch and that's where it was a pocket. And then this one she had open here, Vicky cut this and closed it, but left this one open to put another book. So you as the maker get to transform that structure into what you want to do. But because we made it all one piece, it's easy to go in and add things to. So here you can see this is an et cetera tag, right? You can see it's, it's a thicker tag, Stampers Anonymous, et cetera, tag. So just creating that piece, right? So this could be something that could be hung up. But I love, again, the portrait, little call collect, that gauge frame, using those dials. Look at that background. I love how these dials are cut in half. How cool is that? Cut them in half and mix and match. That's a brilliant background. I would have never thought of that. I love that. Because they're all the same, they're just going to be matchy-matchy, right? Then layer with a couple strips. Looks like some embossing glaze over there. Looks like a little antique linen embossing glaze and crayon. Wow, that is cool. Then again, there's one of those pictures from the backdrops. Look at those guys. Cool, right? Little optical lens, metal stars. We've got a lot of those uh, foundry tags. And then here just created another pocket. Look at all these great tags. I've seen so many little mini clips now. That's fun. Really great. Oh, there's a stencil card. See, those are from last year. Happy to see those in the make. So great such an oh it's just such it's crazy to see like the industrialness of the same stuff i think that's what's so incredible where you, like you see one book and then it changes and then here just using those uh, elements so there's that linen tape but look it's all like just shabby fabric and then just taking those cards and creating this there's the machine heads right that's from layers i think district i love the key look how grungy that is just a found key see i love these new word keys because to me they they adapt so much better to all the makes because it's not that big uh, clunky key on there. A little story stick, right? Again, 
one of those tags. I like these. I think these tags got retired. Yeah, love the grip paste too. Look at that just effect on the metal. Just really very cool. There's Yonkers, Mario. Different Yonkers, but different. <laughs> but cool. Wow, great. See, a great stylistic book for uh, that. And I know Vicky was like, I don't know if I'll ever do another mini book again. Vicky, you should, because it's it's just cool. It's cool to see everybody's take on on that structure, right? So Susie created this one, right? So same structure, but here we've got that marble uh, paper. I love that new, see, I told you those, those adornments are just spectacular to use as a piece. I love the live your story on the spine, adding some elements to the back, right? Using those little papers and ephemera. And then as we open this one up, look at all that little bit of lace and look at all these little, oh, all these fragmented photos. Oh my gosh. So see, what's really nice about having these photos in backdrops is they do create a great piece. And even though they're photos, we were talking about that uh, when Paul and I were like, how are people gonna use big photos? Well, the proof is right here. It doesn't have to just be that one frame thing. Having these elements in the background can still tie in your story. And I love all the little bits of, of lace. Look at the transparency, right? A little collage medium dulls that down, which is nice. I love the word key, there's fly, right? This little pocket. How nice is that? Oh, so beautiful. Oh, and see, now I'm not gonna get that back in. Yes, I will. There we go. All right, here's our tag in there. Now this, so let's look at this, the extension of that, right? So just because like that is part of it, you can still add that little card and add that little pocket card. So this, just adding another piece of paper, stitching it, turn that into a pocket and also uh, create a whole nother reveal. Uh, one of my favorites too, look at that little band. A yeah, great photo. Really great. Tammy gave me that photo back in the day. Really cool. I love that. Yep, little pockets right there. Oh, with the portrait. So beautiful. See all these details? My gosh. So there was something about this book, and I hope I do it justice. Paula tried to explain it to me, so we shall see. All right, has a piece of lace. There's the mummy cloth. Oh, I get it now. Okay. I didn't get it when you explained it, Paula. Now I totally get it. So Susie took the zigzag book. It, it's still the accordion book, right? But sealed one edge, if you will, right? So it's still the folded book, but sealed the edge. So instead of it opening, now it created that same kind of accordion, but it created its own pockets, right? So by that, by that zig and zag not opening because you sealed it, now it created two pockets. Does that make sense? Because if you have that whole accordion, if you seal one side, that's really clever, really clever. So there, there are the pockets for that little book. What a great use for that accordion book. If you don't want it to open up all the way as zigzag, just adding these little elements, that's really unique. I love just the layers. There's some frosted crystal over the portraits. Frosted crystal is one of my favorite things to put onto photos to give them not only texture, but kind of that little pixelated look great texture, your ephemera, see all the number strips, those little things, why we do all the, the little snippets of things, it's because those details, that's what captures the story. There's the feather, that new feather in our ephemera pack, the snapshots. I love just seeing the just different pieces of the portraits, right? Ripped out, photos from the collage tile. What I know, dreams come true, so lucky. Clipping stickers for the win, because you can tell any kind of story, but wow, see there again, there's that there's that frosted crystal on there. Amazing. Susie says Very cool. Described it perfectly. Did I? Well, good. Well, when Paula, she's like, it's the accordion book that's not cut, but it created a pocket because it's closed. And I'm like, okie dokie. But now I get it. It is closed and it does have pockets, but it wasn't cut. That's really, it's just cool. But see, even the aesthetic, like a totally different palette and vibe than uh, what Vicky did and totally different than what Paula did. And now we'll look at what Marlies did. Thanks, Mario. See, I, I'm, I'm happy I did it this way. I wasn't sure when I was setting this up last night um, if I wanted to go, all th go through all these at the same time, but I think if you guys see them, kind of the same with, with Sharon's cards, if you see them all together, it, uh, to me it sparks, I think, more ideas. So I love this whole wrap, all the different fabrics, right? Just using the vintage fabrics. This is from my fabric line uh, that I, I did with Free Spirit, but I love seeing that because they were inspired by the papers, right? But having that little band come off and then we have all these threads and here is that folio. So again, using the papers, the backdrops, I love the rubs. See, 
Those are all rubs on there, guys. It's just that perfect black matte finish. If you're not a fan of rubs, I'm telling you, that and the remnant rub tool and you are ready to go. But you can add those elements and then when we open this up, oh wow, look at that. First of all, just the threads, right? You just wanna be like, you wanna pet the threads. But here is that folio. Okay, this is, all right, so these open. I see that, oh, but then they're also pockets, okay. So this is that same, it's that same folio, but I'm just trying to see like, it has two things and one thing. I see the one thing. So these open, so Marlee still did these open. Look at all the detail in there. With the paper dolls, the wood grain, the ephemera. But then there's like these little, like removable things. So here's a, a little pocket with the transparency. You guys see that? A printed transparency. And then you could have inclusions that, that come out of that, right? So other little pockets because of that transparency. Isn't that fun? Just to have that word in there where it says objects. That's really cool. Using the hardware heads, the tape, the key. Mm -mm. Love that. A little stamping. And then here's another little pocket, I think. Yep. Oh, wow. Cool. So more little pieces with the rubs. Just cutting out some of those cards. There's the label, right? The snippet label and stamped on there. I love just having that little inclusion of, of just a little flash card, right? With some stamps and some of the snips. And again, having those portraits on the front, just really cool. And same thing on the other side. We've got another pocket with the transparency and then that seal. See the transparency is just fine. It just allows to have that window. Uh oh, pork chop fingers coming in. There we go. Very cool, right? Just add that little card in there. Little rubs on top of that index clip. Wow, so good. So many details. And then this, oh yeah, this has stuff coming out of it too. Wow. I can totally see the whole junk journal, right? You just create stuff and you just add little elements and tuck them in here and there. And I think if I made a junk journal though, I'd probably always use the junk on something else. You know, I'd be like, oh, I need to make a quick card. Ooh, cool. Collage card. Done. And then, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe then I can make a junk journal and actually use the junk and then keep refilling the journal with junk. It's like a never ending junk. I like that. It's a mindset of a junker. Now this, this is going to do something. I'm sure of it. So let me, I hope. I'm just, I'm taking my time because if I'm not supposed to undo the string, I'd probably see the chat blow up. But for right now, I, I hope that I don't, I hope this whole thing doesn't fall off. Nope. Cool. All right. So did you, did you guys see that? It was tied up there with like through an eyelet through the back, just looped. But then around that baseboard frame, and that's where that flap is. So she attached that window frame, and then there's that snapshot. How cool. I love that with the rubs. I love just all this wood grain paper just kind of framing that in, right? Isn't that cool? And then again, the linen tape. But that was really a great way to kind of frame that photo, but also just make something interactive because you could still, you know, you could have a book in there. You could have all sorts of different things, but I love the mechanics of that. See? Bookmakers mechanics. You untie this and flip this and flop that. And wow. So cool, Marlies. Just the, the detail layers, right? All the, all these folios, unbelievable. And I think the other thing um, that, that I'm happy about, and Paula and I talked about this, as I mentioned, we've done a lot of folios in the years of ideology, but I think what it was is the scale of them were just too big, right? Having something so big was an undertaking and having this a really nice size that you can still use large elements and small elements. It's doable. It's to me, it's not overwhelming. It would be doable. And all of the things of course are scaled to fit. So that's really, really cool. All right. Then I did a make. I did a make last night because I just felt like it. I really wanted to do it because one of the things that I love about collage tiles that I want to uh, talk about is that when you work with the collage tiles, you get two of each, right? So there's 36 that if you worked on uh, the vignette panel, you have enough to create, say, two of the same, if you will, because there's two of each of the same tiles. But really, my reasoning for wanting to put two in there, and some people might agree or disagree, that's fine, you do you, is I wanted the ability that if I created a panel that I could raise some of these up. Now, some might argue where it's like, well, you can't really see the other one and I would just put, you know, black cardstock or blue, but up close when you're looking at it, you can see, depending on where the light hits it, you can see what's underneath the other one. So what I like to do was create the collage and all I did was replicate what was on the package, right? I think that the, the collage on the front of the package was, was great. 
created it, glued them all down with collage medium, did my crayon, did all of that, and then I selected certain ones that I wanted to raise up. So I took that same tile that would be underneath it, I glued it onto a piece of chipboard with collage medium because this way collage medium is what makes crayon work. So I did the same thing. I did my same little smudge around the edge. This way when I layered it, it still gave you, when you looked at it from a distance, it still gave you the illusion of the grid lines. But then I also love the fact that certain pieces come up because then when you walk by it, it just has a whole different level of interest. It's not just, it's not just a little flat, right? And then I went in to add a little embellishment. Not much. I didn't overthink it. I went into all my little embellishment drawers. I took my white crayon, right? I didn't even go in with alcohol inks or anything and just rubbed white crayon on each thing because I thought that that little bit of like oxidation would tie everything in and not take away from all the color that was in the background. I didn't want that. So there's a little wishbone charm from the lucky set, a star, there's a story stick, a little heart charm, and then I attached them. So first I glued them down, right? I'm a gluer, use collage medium. And then I went in and anything with a hole, got a little nail, right? And that nail just, I, I used a little paper pierce first because the whole thing was built, tacked in the nail. So there's a nail, there's a nail, there's a nail. Uh, anything that had a hole, got a nail. There's one, right? And if it didn't, it just stayed where it was. Well, I left the key because I like the key. But you can see that just adding that little bit of element just gave you kind of a whole new, I don't know, use for collage tiles. And whether you're doing everyday collage tiles or Christmas, so yes, you can save and you can make two makes, but there is a benefit to having two because even if you wanted to take it to another level, I've always said that I'm not a fussy cutter, I own that, but those that are, you could then essentially take this second tile and you could fussy cut that butterfly and layer the butterfly or fussy cut that shield and lay that. So you could go into different elements and take it one step further and actually cut out individual details. You can take the idea to the next level, but I think that just adding these, and I just used some foam tape squares, nothing fancy, and created that tile. So honestly, I did this last night. Maybe it took, uh, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half max, because I just copied what was on the packaging uh, and layered it up. But a lot of fun, collage medium and crayons, cool. All right, uh, we got one more make, and this one, this, this make, I'm telling you, it just captured my, it captured my heart. Uh, and when I saw it, I just said, this, this has to be mine. <laughs> this goes, my pile. Um, so thank you, Paula. Paula created this. And really, I'm like, I, I have to have it. I, I, we send back the makes to all the makers. But this one, I just, when I saw it, I, I love it. I love everything about it. So uh, Paula created this. It is a vignette panel but look at the paper around it, right? Using that backdrop with all those little numbers. But this is like, I don't know, it's like industrial grunge meets shabby glam in a way. I don't know, like I don't know where her mind goes, but I'm just gonna tell you about what I love. So first, it's that photo. It's that backdrop that is like, oh my gosh, amazing backdrop. That little stitch scrap, which is a little bit of red, but it's this, it's the adornments, right? Those really big, beautiful flourish pieces. Oh, so good. And then those frames, right? These are the ideology frames. And I love how she framed one of the guys in there and kind of tinted him. Time, lost and found, because let's face it, guys, that's it. Time is just something, it's lost and found, right? It's here and then it's gone and you just, you want more of it. So. I, I just loved everything. It just had meaning to me. And that little factory button, then all these machine heads, the stars, the number of days, just those little vintage buttons on there. I love the tag that she added with that little bit of string. I don't know, that whole piece, like everything about it is yum. From the grunge to the stitching to the splatter, what a cool way to create a story, right? And whether this is a story from a backdrop or whether it's a story from a photo you have, but I think that whole little cluster of magic is good. And I was even more excited to hear that she is, she is going to be selling this as a kit. So I'm like, you need to kit this because, well, one, you're not getting it back, so you need to make another one for yourself. Um, but she is doing, she'll be selling a kit for this. So well done, Paula, because this make is just, isn't it just cool? Like, who thinks like that with all those different layers? I mean, I thought it was all fancy using foam tape on a square. And then there's this. It's like, okay. 
I need to up my leveling game, right? So beautiful. So that is just a, a unbelievable make. So for those lucky people that are gonna gonna get that kit. All right. So how'd we do? So far, so good. Everyone doing all right? I'm looking at everything. Let's see. Yeah? yeah. That makes me happy. All right. So one thing that I wanted to share with you. Uh, well, well, one other thing. Then we'll wrap this up. I promise is I uh, wanted to kind of go back and talk about the barrels, right? So the barrels themselves uh, didn't make it, I told you, in time for the makes. Uh, may I says, Paula, have a YouTube channel. She does not. She has a blog and Instagram, so you can check her out there. Uh, but she, uh, Paula, is not on YouTube that, that I know of. Uh, no, she's not. Yeah, no. So, um, so I'll talk about the barrels. So the cool thing about the resin barrels, as I mentioned, is I wanted something that kind of mimicked that container, if you will, like we had for the cauldron. But I wanted something every day, and I really love the idea of, of an every day. And I wanted to replicate that kind of, I don't know, wine barrel kind of look. So the detail of this, this is what I was saying. Again, a shout out to Tracy, because this went back and forth a million times until it was exactly how I wanted it to be. Okay. So these little barrels, the little resin barrels, they are sculpted with a little wood grain. They're hand painted, hand antiqued. So the little band is actually uh, metal, right? It's not metal, it's resin, but it's metallic paint uh, that is uh, rubbed with a stain. The insides also look grungy and stained. This is how they come because I wanted something that even if you didn't fill it, it would just look cool in and of itself, right? So the entire thing is just, it's an awesome, awesome barrel. But here's what I wanted to do. And this is like where my imagination went. And same thing, I did all of this last night because I thought the fact that I have no makes, with, Mario's laughing because it's true. The fact that there are no makes for the barrel, I wanted to show you like why this little thing is so freaking cool. Now, because of that, um, because I was down to the wire, the barrels and the clock are the only two items that will be shipping later this month. Everything else in ideology is available now. It started shipping, it's, it started shipping I think as early as maybe Thursday of this past week and we'll be shipping all next week. So all of all your retailers will be getting ideology. It is everything is in stock except for barrels and the clock. So I think a lot of retailers aren't even going to offer that. They're going to show out of stock. So don't freak your freak. They're not out of stock. They're just not here yet because, well, I talked to you about the clock already. I wanted that removable thing. So that held up uh, the whole production thing and the barrels. I wanted that perfect finish. Um, and the texture and the, the thickness and the tapered edge and everything. So that held it up. But these are only just a, a, a few weeks behind. So just so you know. But here's what I love about the barrels. The barrels can really bring all of my favorite ideology things to life, right? So cute. So the barrels work with the ideology bouquet, right? So this right here, these are just the ideology flowers that you can ink and you can fill in that little barrel. Put a little moss, and there you go. Toadstools, I love the toadstools. You can put them in all sorts of things, but these toadstools, perfect scale for the barrel. So I just added those, you can paint them, you can do whatever you want, and the, I've done nothing to the barrel. And then this, bubbles, I love bubbles, and if you shopped at Halloween and you ordered a bunch of bubbles, you're gonna be so happy you did, because look at how cute you can make a little bubble bath, a little bubble barrel that comes out of that. So cute. And then for fall, if you have any of the ideology pumpkins, and we do have pumpkins coming out uh, again this year, you can fill that little barrel with pumpkins. I painted it, did a little distressed crayon on there, right? Added a little bit of raffia so it has a little straw. Or you can do the woodland trees, right? You can take your favorite woodland trees and you can add a tree to the barrel, right? For the snow, I just took a little styrofoam, little styrofoam ball and tucked some in there just for some fake snow, but you could use grit paste. But I think, how cute is that, that there is just an idea. So this wasn't even a make, it was just a, a way to sample it. I always like to sample things on things, right? The same way I did uh, on a ruler, I just hot glued these to a, a cheese box. But I just wanted you to show, to show you that like one little container can really support a lot of different ideology product year round right? When you're looking for that vessel to put like flowers or mushrooms or, you know, something spring for bubbles or something fall. That was the importance of that container. And that's why I kept going back to Tracy going, nope, 
it's not tall enough. Nope, it's not wide enough. Nope, it's too thick. No, the finish isn't right because I wanted it to just be perfect no matter when I wanted to use it. And even more so for the scale, it also fits the larger tree, right? You've seen so many at Christmas time where uh, they put their trees like in barrels and buckets now. So I wanted it that it would be the same diameter as that medium tree, which you can see is so cute, but also be the perfect scale that I wanted to put the large woodland tree in, it would work. So all those details, like when I talked before about the barrel and I laughed, that's what I kind of put Tracy through, where I'm like, nope, it's too big, nope, too tall, nope, too short, no. Nope. But when it's just right, it's just right. It's the perfect scale for everything in ideology. So that's what I wanted to share about the, the barrel and why I'm really happy that it is, it is part of the line.